I mean, I, I don't think it's biased against conservatives, to be quite honest, but we could go in circles on this or we could just, you know, it's up to you. So you think conservatives are, you're not making, you're, you're not making sense, man. He's breaking down. We know conservatives, mis, like, don't <laughs> use the concept of misgendering. We, we know conservatives they will use call it all it the time it's why tucker right? carlson yes. was banned it's why Therefore, charlie kirk was, was suspended not, they, they are, both are, deleted are the not tweets fitting what conservatives do and think on a daily basis i mean you could it argue is, it is over it is like it's one plus one equals two it's like just right there in front of you i mean you could argue that about anything though like what what do you mean like what like you can't say the n-word on twitter and and do conservatives want to say the n-word yeah <laughs> oh please <laughs> they do <laughs> Not all conservatives, but they're, the subsection of Twitter that does want to is certainly on Hell the right. Yeah. There are Hell people yeah, who man. like using bad words on the right. There are people who like using bad words on the left. Right, which is why the overwhelming majority. So, so if you look at the left on this chart, for those that are... Oh my god. <laughs> Mark Ledwich, one of the authors of the uh, report that he's talking. <laughs> Tech QAnon crackdown was a huge mistake. <laughs> Oh, Tim. Oh, man, this is gonna look bad in hindsight. I would probably lean at this point more towards uh, rights falling to the individual states. So you, okay, so you're happy Roe v. Wade is, is I going say, down. I wouldn't say happy. That's, that's <laughs> a bit of an overstatement. <laughs> I mean, I think, but I, but, I mean, you are now he on the record. He is so slimy. Roe he v. is Wade such a weasel. The story is, the CEO of Twitter basically said we can't do an external audit of Twitter's spam bots because you need internal data. Therefore, Elon Musk's audit of bots won't be, he's basically saying his audit won't work. They're also apparently accusing Elon of violating his non-disclosure uh, non agreement by revealing that Twitter only surveyed 100 accounts to figure out how many bots they had on the platform. Yeah, what is on the which walls? Which is remarkably low, but I also think isn't the full picture. What I imagine they did is- He needs a, like a mace. Cat o' nine tails. So they look at 100, they look at 100, they look at 100. But now they're accusing him of violating his NDA. Elon apparently is, is, is uh, it's being reported, trying to negotiate lower terms, like a lower, lower price. Personally, I think Elon may have discovered fraud because we know that Twitter has misrepresented their numbers on two different occasions in two different reports. And we had the crazy swing in user accounts uh, the week before they announced their bot numbers. So we'll talk about all that. Hey, James. We got a bunch of other Everyone stories to to James um, we're going to get into. And some of them are going to be, uh, well, well, I'll just, I'll just say this one. We have, uh, I'm trending on Twitter because mm. I made a tweet about abortion mm. because I had a conversation with a friend in New York about abortion and he didn't know what. His tweet was so asinine. It's like, well, what if a woman at eight months of pregnancy goes to get an abortion and then all of a sudden she's forced to give birth because she goes into labor? What happens then? We should definitely be talking about uh, the breaking news, but I also want to talk about, um, there's been other mass shootings too. We got Starbucks. They're going to yeah, be paying for uh, abortion and gender change uh, surgeries for uh, their staffers. So a lot going on today, and I'm sure a whole lot more. And joining us to discuss all of this is Matt Bender. Hello, everybody. Pleasure to be here. Looking mm -hmm. forward to talking. Yeah. Absolutely. Matt, who are you? Who am I? Well, for a long time, people, and probably still, because I'm on there every week, I'm on the Majority Report with Sam Cedar. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know you're a big fan, Tim. Um, also, I have a show called Doomed with Matt Binder that covers the far right, white supremacists, conspiracy theories like QAnon. And I have a show about crypto that takes it on from a leftist perspective called Scam Economy. We are going to have so many disagreements. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. So we'll, we'll definitely talk about it. Matt, no, thanks for coming. It's no awesome. problem. We have, a, we have a long history. This is um, surreal. And I don't think you realized because you've previously spoken about your, your long history with the Majority Report with Sam Cedar. Wow. Um, because one, one thing. I mean, you, you know. said it was the first media show right. to mention. That's a pretty big deal. I mean, you don't forget that. That's right. Um, yeah. Sam was your first, whether you like it or not. That's true. Um, <laughs> yeah, he said, uh, what did he say? Did he, he, he said, I was okay, I think, right? He said, Henry was great. This other guy's pretty good and it was and they played a clip where i was standing up live streaming the occupiers taking the, the oh orange net fire out of the gates yeah. yeah and to be clear that was sam's opinion in 2011 <laughs> i want people to I right. want people to make sure that there's not like sam afterwards like he thought tim was just second rate even then nope nope um, I, get, I get to play that every time and be like this is now this is 2022 Right. And then, you know, I, uh, you know, I don't think you know, knew this till I came on and told you, but when you came on the majority report, uh, I was the producer at the time who reached out to you and said, Hey, Tim, you should come on the show. Crazy. 
Yeah. Well, here you are, man. Yeah, here we are. This is going to be a good conversation. We have a lot uh, to address. 11 years later. 11 <laughs> years later. We're old. Occupy Wall Street. We're old. You know what's crazy? Yeah, you guys are old. Oh, well, yeah. old. How old are you? 27. 27 how old are, is how old are you? I'm 35. Oh, okay. We're like the same age. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The crazy thing is during Occupy Wall Street, it was like just you know 12 or so years after um, the battle in Seattle. Which I right. wasn't at because I was too young. Right. Yes. And now I'm like 11 years on from Occupy. It's a crazy feeling. It's yeah. Like, wow. But let's. We'll, we'll, we got a lot to talk about. We also got Seamus. My name is Seamus Coglin. I create animated, educational, and satirical political cartoons on a channel called Freedom Tunes. Y'all should oh, go no over there and check way. it out. And we That's also have the an Freedom Tunes about guy. The platform tonight. I'm. I'm sure I'll do That's it later. Wild. I don't want to like derail the entire show with this exciting announcement. We won't really be able to get into any interesting conversations if I well, do right. so. But. Stay tuned, and uh, thank you so much for stopping by the show. And I am also here since Ian is out for the full no week. No Moon Lord. Oh, Moon Lord denied. He's going to be having a great time. Hopefully. I'm hoping he does. Traveling cross-country is not always super fun, but hopefully this is good for him. And, uh, yeah, let's read our sponsor. There were, there were people who were saying it, like, it was funny last week. They were like, Ian needs a vacation. Sure but, like, did? not in a negative way. They were Perfect. like, this yeah. guy's been on the show, like, nonstop, never had, a, like, you know, very... And then I was like, that's really interesting that they're Let saying him have a vacation. Like, was planning vacation. Moon Lord yeah. deserves of course, a break. he took off as I come on. I know. I, mean, I, know, I was, you know, people keep telling me to take a vacation too, and I'm like, never on, you know? So <laughs> yeah. I, it seems like leave, your audience Seamus. really cares about me. Yeah. All right, before we get started, my friends, head over to eatrightandfeelwell.com and secure <laughs> your Keto Elevate from Biotrust. This is C8 MCT oil powder. You mix it in your food and drink. Amazing. It is not a secret because I basically talk about it every time we promo Biotrust that I've lost like 20 Hey, better than Prepper Buck. By it's better than sugars, the slop buckets. Adding sure this stuff to my coffee, a lot of fat, low sugar, to cut off bread, basically. There's a period where I had some bread, and it just was really awful. So again, Wait, eat what? right and feel well. Does bread affect him like You'll apple cider affects Peterson? You'll get a money-back guarantee. Keto Elevate provides your body only C8. The most wait, are you a celiac? That's a really weird thing to say. Like, oh, I had some bread this one time. It was really bad. Don't eat bread, everybody. <laughs> You've been lied to by big bread. You'll get five grams of the highly sought after MCT C8 per scoop. Free shipping on every order. And for every order today, Biotrust donates a nutritious meal to a hungry child in your honor hmm. through their partnership with NoKidHungry.org. To date, Biotrust has provided over 5 million meals to hungry kids. Police help Biotrust hit their goal of 6 million meals this year. You'll get free VIP live health and fitness coaching from Biotrust's team of expert nutrition and health coaches for life with every order and their free e-report, the top 14 ketogenic foods with every order. Again, eatrightandfeelwell.com, 51% off. And don't forget, head over to timcast.com, become a member to support our work. As a member, you'll get access to exclusive segments from the show Monday through Thursday at 8 p.m. So we'll have one of those going up tonight. And you're also helping keep our journalists employed. So smash that like button. Very happy to not be supporting Tim by being here. Yes, that's the service I wanted to provide. After all, I was reached out to by Matt Binder himself, and he asked if I would uh, both record and stream this event. So I have permission from Matt Binder to bring you the exclusive lefty version of the TimCast special Tim Pool versus Matt Binder uh, beanie bath. Spam and fake accounts make up less than 5% of the social media platform's users. Okay, I had to lead with the poop emoji one, but the real story is that Elon Musk may actually, a, a, a deal at a lower price is not out of the question. There's a lot to break down in this story. But basically, Elon Musk tweeted out a story from May 2nd, where Twitter filed a report saying their users was around 5% five, uh, 5 of their users were spam or bots. Elon Musk of the deal yeah, was on go support Matt Binder. Go follow his uh, show on YouTube. Today, the CEO said, you can't verify it because we have internal data on who people actually are, and it's private that we can't share. That's an interesting point. Elon mentioned that he would take a random sampling of 100 users. And then he got accused of, like, that's a ridiculous sample size. You can't use that. So then he revealed, actually, this is Twitter. Is the, that's the number they use. Then Twitter apparently called him, or so he says, and accused him of violating his NDA. Things are getting crazy. I'm not entirely convinced the deal will go through. My personal opinion is that Elon Musk is intending to expose algorithmic manipulation and potential fraud as it pertains to bots. Two things we ended up learning since, since this, uh, this, this deal Normal was Normal stuff through. to one, do to a company before Twitter you acquire Twitter misrepresented it. its user accounts by, I think, a couple million on more than one occasion. Even The Verge questioned how could that have happened. And then we saw the strange shift where people associated with the right, libertarians, started gaining tons of followers, particularly people who were associated with more, like Marjorie Taylor Greene or Matt Gates gained a ton. But then we saw Barack Obama lose a bit. We saw Katy Perry lose a bit. If you were associated with, with the mainstream or the left, you were losing followers. 
Now, to me, my theory is algorithmic manipulation, but I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are. I don't know, Matt. If you yeah, want to I mean, in. I think when it comes to that, I think people are just uh, reacting to the news of Elon Musk. I think people heard what Elon Musk was planning to do in terms of bringing back Ben users, specifically one Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And I think you had a number of uh, people who lean left or maybe apolitical, but just don't like Donald Trump or people of that, uh, you know, of that political affiliation. Um, and they deactivated their account. I'm not even saying they left for good. They just deactivated as a, as a, as a protest. And, um, you know, conservatives definitely came back because they heard Elon Musk. And you saw this a lot. Conservatives actually think, and I can't say all, but the ones that you see on Twitter randomly, like you saw all these uh, big conservative like influencers come on and go like, oh, I'm back because of Elon Musk. And it's like, why are you lying to your followers? That's not true. You're not back because of Elon Musk because Elon Musk didn't do anything. He doesn't own Twitter yet. Like they well, were who came back. They, well, you had Tucker Carlson act like he came back because he would, no, Charlie he was Kirk too. Yeah, he was suspended and right, he acted. Right. He acted like he he oh, could I have see. unsuspended himself at any time. He had to delete a single tweet. He chose on the day that Elon Musk announced he was going to purchase. All that news came out about Elon Musk, uh, Elon Musk purchasing Twitter. He decided on that day to tweet that uh, I'm back. There were a few others uh, who said that too. I can look them up in a second if you want. For sure. Um, no, I'm familiar with it. Yeah. And it's like, why are you? Because they know, like Tucker Carlson knows because he did what, Charlie Kirk's another one. Um, yeah, they, he said he was back. He, he said he was back on Twitter. He had to delete a tweet. Oh, right, 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 right. Because they, they all had tweeted something that goes against Twitter's policy. But hold on. So, so right. So did they delete the tweets or were they reinstated? No, they deleted the tweets. Yeah, hundred you know percent sure. I know that for sure. Do you know who the red-headed libertarian is? I'm not familiar with the red-headed. She, she's libertarian. my go-to go example of this one. She was suspended in January of 2021 for no reason. Right, like she didn't break any rules. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell her why she was suspended, but she got reinstated the following day. So sure. there were a whole bunch of people that um, you know that that we saw who were saying things like, "I was suspended until now." We had people chatting us like, "I haven't been on Twitter because I've been banned." Let me check. Whoa, my account's back. Well, do they know that it was back before that? For all they know, that suspension could have lifted in the they weeks, got months before. So look, it, that it's possible. I it's mean, anecdotal, right? I don't, but I don't we do know like we do know that those big influencers who could have deleted, they weren't suspended and had nothing they could do to get back on. They specifically were told, delete this offending, uh, the policy that offends our, uh, the tweet that offends our policy, excuse me, delete yeah. that, and you can come back on. That's the rule for certain uh, content that goes against the policy. It's not a full-blown <clears throat> suspension. And they could have done it any time, chose not to. And the day Elon Musk, and, you know, the news broke, uh, he bas they basically came back and decided. But to you know, I, I don't think you can say you know that Tucker deleted the tweet. The tweet's not there anymore. If it, but maybe they deleted it. <laughs> no, they don't do that. They don't do that for that occasion. I, I, I would agree, too. Oh my God, it does sound Tim. like they deleted the tweet. They like, definitely and then deleted came the tweet. Back. I mean, maybe, but maybe. How do you know like, the tweet's like not saying, there? People joined it's the been platform deleted. because Elon was moving in. So they were like, okay, I'll come back now. Well, and they maybe, chose to. Yeah, they chose to maybe yeah, now decide to cope. delete the tweet. Sure, that could here's, have been one occasion. Here's the challenge I, I have with, with, with this idea. I mean, I think uh, we, we, we've Just talked about fact. it quite a bit. I think fraud. And the reason is, on the surface, that makes the most sense. Twitter said mm, pivot right away. Uh, people deactivating their topic. accounts was organic. And, and uh, I, don't think they, I don't know if they commented on people signing up or joining. But when you take a look, I pulled up my Twitter numbers here. We can see that on April 25th, I gained 19,000. On April 27th, I gained 39,000. On the 28th, 47,000. It's crazy. Shit. But on Monday, the day that the news actually broke, I only gained, I only gained 1,000. And it was 8 a.m. Right. Why did no one sign up on the day of? And why did they wait 20, 24 hours after the fact? I've got no idea. I mean, there's something certainly interesting going on at Twitter right now. And I've, I, you know, I don't think anyone could really explain it. Why did Katy Perry lose 200,000 followers? Right. Well, I'm sure she has a user base that's mainly young, millennial, Gen Z, and... You know, we know from a fact, uh, you know, that, that they're not big fans of Donald Trump. Why, and, uh, why, why the following Monday did Twitter put out its report on its total numbers of, of bots and spam the week before we have this weird thing happen a day after the sale is announced? So, you know, here, here, here's my train of thought. I don't I don't think you're, you're wrong. I think what I see as being more probable is Monday at 8 a.m. They announced they're in the final discussion. Nothing happens. It was it was at two fifty three p.m. I think they officially announced that Elon fifty two maybe had officially secured the deal. That night something changed. So the next morning, massive growth of followers, right. tons of <laughs> people. You know, like aside from Tucker and other. Why people does it have to be like a conspiracy theory to remove a tweet? There were people who were saying that they were banned. And the example it's, that I it's go totally to totally natural to assume not, people would you know, leave the platform. The redheaded right libertarian who had created a new account specifically liberals. Why? all of a sudden getting reinstated a year later, but 24 hours after the fact. The drop-off in, in followers was the same thing, 24 hours after. 
So I, I'd imagine that the morning they announced Elon Musk is going to buy the platform, people would have started signing up and coming back, right? Maybe. I mean, I, I really, I don't think either of us could really speak to this. We just only speculate. I mean, because right. there could have been things happening behind the scenes at Twitter. Um, there could be external factors where third parties decided to literally manipulate it so that people like you and me would sit here and pontificate about what could possibly have happened. Um, I mean, we just don't know. That's one of the, you know, that's one like, of the issues. And, you know, the fact I think is the, Elon the, didn't uh, control the platform. In terms of this particular at that, at that story, moment. I think the bigger thing here or still is, doesn't. you know, Elon Musk knew this information. Like he, he announced that Reuters, like he, he shared that Reuters story about the 10%, less than 10% five. of, tw uh, less than 5%, yeah. was it five? I'm pretty five. sure it was 10. Five. That might be five, okay. Uh, whatever the percentage was. There you go, I got Axios. Well under 5%. Okay, so yeah. he had that information that under 5% uh, were spam. Uh, but the Reuters story he shared, that's from the Twitter filing that he had already in the prior week or two. Thank you. When he announced he was going to buy Twitter. Like, he knew this. He had their filing before they filed it? He, he knew, no, he knew the information. He was let in, obviously, on what, he, he had to make a decision on whether to buy the company or not. Yeah. So they would let him, they would let them know what their projections are or what their, you know, what their, their finances where, are. Wh where did you hear that? Well, they, <laughs> it's part of the, it's part of the deal. That's where it's from. It's it's like it's in the it's in the deal itself. It says that we gave Elon information on these things. I mean, he had a, he had a bunch of information. That's how he makes the inform That's how he makes the determination to buy and the company. Or not. Sounds like he didn't have that information, and that's why he's raising an issue about. I it. mean, perhaps. I mean, it's weird <laughs> that he would you know it's weird that he would go about doing this, and then because me personally, I thought you know a lot of people were worried that Elon Musk would um, you know change it's a Twitter. Forty-four and that's billion dollar deal, left, and that's why there was all this. I don't, I'm not worried about Twitter uh, in terms of Elon Musk doing horrible things to like content moderation. Like maybe he will, maybe he won't. I think he's just mostly a hype man. He likes the attention. He likes to say a lot of things and not, you know, and not deliver. Yeah, it's um, a $44 billion I think acquisition. The biggest get a rundown. To Twitter when it comes to Elon Musk is he seems to not understand social media. He doesn't understand the business of social media at all. If you look at his ideas to generate revenue, he wants users to pay to use Twitter. It's not going to happen. I, well, I think he said high profile users. So yeah. if individuals Brands. using Twitter would not have to pay for it, but if you were a larger brand or a government, you would have to pay some kind of fee. Well, I, I would definitely. That's do bullshit. That. I mean, maybe you would, but there's also a lot of companies that just wouldn't. No, or they, a, lot they, of, they, a lot of uh, basic like users who would be influential. Like the why are they going after the one percent? Who's got Come a blue on. check mark? I got a big account. I have, <laughs> I have a check mark to lose. Automatically, <laughs> someone of means or something like that is just three bucks per month. Just I mean, three dollars. People people wouldn't use. People wouldn't pay. People wouldn't. I think they would. I mean, the, what he's talking about is a suite of tools and access to fix problems and to help the high profile customers. I think he's right. Um, I think if you look at uh, most digital services, they offer a, hey, if you know you pay this premium package, we'll give you access to this, these backend tools, these analytics and things like that. Like we pay for a bunch of Google tools. Like I have multiple Google reps for all the different stuff we use. We have nothing like that for Twitter. I've even bought Twitter ads and there's like no one to talk to. Right, because Twitter users don't necessarily uh, react to Twitter ads. It's not the same business model. Oh, they do. They do. I got a million hits on my song by putting it by buying an ad for it. Right. For real. No, but there's there's all sorts of different types of advertisements. I mean, just look at Twitter's revenue. It's nowhere near the amount that, you know, Facebook or Google makes. It's just not the same audience. They just don't. But you're making the case for Elon. How am I the company's the being run really bad. Oh, no, no, no doubt about it. Yeah. Twitter, Twitter. I was talking about this with someone earlier. Uh, in terms of the big tech companies, Twitter was the most susceptible to something like this. Um, you know, Elon can't afford Google exactly. or yeah. Elon can't afford Facebook. He can't afford, you know, any Apple, Amazon, Microsoft. They're well beyond the amount he could. He, he could barely even do Twitter. He needs to bring a whole bunch of people on board. Uh, and he needs to sell, he needs to sell out uh, Tesla stock. Um, right. But. But it was the it's the one um, platform that's in this realm that has the same sort of cachet as those other platforms. Like when you think of the big tech platforms, you throw Twitter in there, even though they're nowhere near as big when you look behind the curtain. They're the most important, though. In a the, sense, in a sense, it's the depending on what metric. your niche is, depending on what your industry is. That in terms of media and news, for sure. But I'm sure if you talk to people outside those industries, again, we're in this bubble here. So to us, we probably, I mean, I use Twitter more than anything else, too. Yeah. Um, we're definitely in a bubble. I think that's a problem with a lot of things going on. People don't, are in a bubble and they don't realize that they're basically, you know, just taking information as they see it through their own lens. And there's whole other worlds on other platforms, even on Twitter. There's whole other worlds that you probably don't don't even know who Tim Pool is, period. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've tracked the, uh, there's a really cool map thing they do 
They've made multiple. Yeah, Matt's doing really good so far. Where it shows Very like the different cool universes and on Twitter hmm. and how they can connect, and some don't. There's like a cluster of people. It's really small that has zero connection to the rest of the platform in any way. And it's the weirdest thing. And I, I've seen one where there was like a couple of users and I'm just like, what are they talking about? We need about? to figure out what they're doing over yeah, there. What are they doing yeah. over there by themselves? <laughs> uh, I, I think though it's, it's the most important because it is, uh, it's the town square. Facebook isn't. Facebook is. Oh, that's what Twitter brands itself as for sure. Right. So, so Twitter is, you know, news they stories got you. are set They here. got you, Tim. No, they do. No, they for sure. Uh, I mean, I started on Twitter because of Occupy, and it was a way to get news out really quick. And because people who do news and politics use it, it's become influential in the space of news sure. and politics. Yep. And because it is, look, that's why you learn on it. Libs of TikTok is setting policy. Oh, we're gonna inadvertently. Talk TikTok now, cool. No, for sure. I mean, <laughs> they repost these videos, and all of a sudden, it's impacting laws in other yeah. states. So Twitter, Facebook doesn't do that. Right. YouTube. I mean, they'll do it a little bit because they're information platforms that have influence, but Twitter, man. I mean, so so many have argued this. I mean, people people at corporate press have even Facebook argued. does disseminate information to people who'd be more likely to um, believe in something they read online based on, you know, uh, it being falsified or, or you know, not factual, um, simply because they seem to be the more common everyday uh, user in terms of I like, think you know, your, your, your parents, yeah, your parents are on Facebook, uh, you know, family members use Facebook for all sorts of different reasons. And people share things on uh, Facebook that, uh, you know, that they just sort of passively read or, or uh, you know, uh, take in and they just share to people that follow them yeah. on Facebook. Well, and I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there when you discussed family specifically, a huge part of why people use Facebook based on my own experience. And the, the reason people use Instagram is because they're keeping in touch with people around them. Whereas with platforms like Twitter and YouTube, yeah, they're also social media platforms, but they're much more about seeking information from complete strangers or people who you've come to trust over the years because you like their, you know, angle on things. Sure. Yeah. Let's talk about the story we got from Project Veritas that broke uh, just a moment oh, ago. no. We have this um, from Project Veritas. I tweeted out, breaking from Veritas, Twitter employee confirms bias at Twitter. And, that, and I'll give you my opinion. Uh, seems I was right. Because, conservative, because conservatives tolerate leftist speech and leftists won't tolerate the right, Twitter opts to censor the right as balance. So I'll, I'll play a, a bit of yeah, this. Yeah, this is a and massive you can hear cell from phone. himself. Really Capitalists, we weren't really operating like capitalists more. We were very socialist. Like we're all like communist. Ideologically, uh, it does not make sense. Like because we're actually censoring the right, not the left. So if everyone on the right wing will be like, bro, it's okay to say, just gotta tolerate it. Uh, the left will be like, no, I'm not gonna tolerate it. I need to censor it, or else I'm not gonna be in the So it, it does sound right. It's true. There is bias. But I don't know the two parties can truly coexist on one platform. What do your colleagues say about like? They hate it. Oh my god, I'm at least like okay with it, but some of my colleagues are like super left, 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 left. Uh, what do they say? They're, they're like, this will be my last day if it happens. So. Has much changed since? So I'll pause it there. I think we all know the stories about the political leanings of people at, uh, at Twitter's uh, stance. If Elon gets hired, they're like, we're out. But for me, when I saw this, what I found interesting was uh, what I've said before is it's a business decision. You got to take a look at it from Twitter's perspective. People like Ben. Sorry, I just have to interject here. What Project Veritas does and what they've been doing lately is they do this catfishing thing where they put people in dates and on those dates they film them and they're not actually there to date them. They're just there to like get in information and like, okay, a low level Twitter employee has given you an anecdote. How is that anything based in reality? You have to look at raw data. There is actual studies that show you the actual biases that take place in social media. You can look at the numbers. Ben Shapiro are memed for saying, debate me. Right. They the, the right wants to own the libs. They want to be on Twitter. They want to argue with liberals. So they like seeing these tweets. Libs of TikTok is a really good example. Libs of TikTok reposts the things the left says, like, see, hey, look at this. On the left, however, they're the ones that are flagging. They're the ones saying these people should be banned. Uh, Overwhelmingly, you mentioned earlier that, right uh, and right wingers have flagged my channels the rules and that they had been, been suspended. Yeah, in my sure, opinion, they could they could come back. So my, my point, uh, they false you know, flag you all the time. Was, if Twitter is confronted with this from a business perspective, they're going to say the right doesn't care if the left is saying things as much. The left does care if the right is saying things. So purely from a business perspective, we'll, we'll ban as many on the right as we can without disrupting as many users as possible. 
And then we don't got to ban the left because the right's not going to do anything about it anyway. Well, I mean, Twitter has a very clear. Well, first of all, I just want to say that libs of TikTok, there's a little bit more than just reposting uh, what uh, leftists say on TikTok. We could get into that maybe in a little bit. But uh, on this topic, um, you know, uh, Twitter has a pretty clear set of rules and guidelines on their website. And uh, it seems like uh, maybe just right wing accounts break those policies more so than left wing accounts. I know plenty of people <clears throat> who got banned or suspended from Twitter for just literally saying like, uh, uh, you know, fuck you or, uh, you know, you know, something like that. And they get the, uh, you know, this is not uh, part of the uh, Twitter policy. The, you're suspended for, and I know people who got suspended, not even just to delete the tweet and come back, people who got suspended outright had to start oh, sure. new accounts for something like that. Uh, There's, you know, are you familiar with Learn to Code? Yes. So there were, the, the editor in chief of the Daily Caller was commenting on, on, the, on the phenomenon and got suspended for it. So there were, there were tons of people and I think this may be what we're seeing come back with the, the big surge in right-wing users, at least partly. We also have to be careful with this video here. Uh, Project Veritas has a, uh, a long history of... Oh, I was laughing at how he got a new uh, katana because someone called footage. out how cheap his old well, one was. I mean, everybody he didn't learn the blade. No, I mean, edited footage that... Compl I mean, they got sued by uh, people who lost their job. Uh, they're probably his... You know, uh, James O'Keefe... Acorn, when Acorn, went out of, uh, when Acorn was closed down because James O'Keefe released that pimp video, if you recall that. Yeah. Uh, he got sued and he lost because there was more video to it. And everything he said that this woman didn't, you know, didn't do, she actually went Thank ahead you. and did. Finally she, he had to pay him. He had to pay. I think he settled that. I don't think he lost, but you can call it a loss in, in terms of. I mean, of if you settle on it. Well, has he, has he lost anything since he formed Project Veritas? Um, since, uh, I, I, maybe we have to check. I no, the answer is no, he hasn't. All right, maybe yeah. he hasn't. All and right. so. The answer is 100% yes. So, so uh, he, James O'Keefe, actually broke into, or sorry, he didn't break into a building. He posed as like a phone repairman to bug a phone, which was deemed to be like he got he got sued for that as well. Uh, and he was like, well, this was just in order to find out whether or not they were actually taking calls. So I wasn't doing anything illegal at the time. Uh, so, you know, like we've had James on the show, we talked to him about it. He said settling was the biggest mistake he made because they weren't wrong. But I don't want to put words in his mouth because I can't speak to, to this. This was uh, before he formed Veritas. Since Veritas has been around, they've not lost. Uh, I'm pretty sure they've not lost a single lawsuit. In fact, they've won over and over and over again. Wall. Yeah, and he has a whole wall of all the news organizations who have backed down and, and rescinded everything. So I'm yeah, pretty he tried sure to bug the office of a member yeah, of Congress. I th I, that that uh, lawsuit was not necessarily just about them claiming they were misrepresented. A lot of it had to do with California's two-party consent laws with respect to recording somebody. Oh, was sorry. Correction. Yeah, he didn't even do it himself. Mm -hmm. He sent Look, a friend I'm, I'm, in I'm to not, do it. I'm, uh, I think... <laughs> My, my issue with the Veritas stuff and the arguments against them uh, easily exemplified by, I think it was Channel 4 in the UK did the exact same thing Veritas does, and it was just heaps of praise all across the media. A deceptive, like they, they lied to the targets, they go in and they say like, here's who we are, and it's not true, and then they secretly record them, and then they publish it on the news. And it was praised by all the big mainstream publications. That's exactly what Veritas does. So if you do undercover reporting, then I mean, I don't see what the issue is. In the settlement, uh, James O'Keefe claimed <laughs> he was unaware that uh, the woman who was suing him uh, literally did everything that he claimed that she didn't. Uh, she called the police the second he came in, and he, she warned uh, them about what was going on and what she was experiencing. And I when, mean, that when, was the that was, was the was main it? when this happened. This yeah. was in uh, 2013. And was that Project Veritas or James O'Keefe? Uh, I guess it was James O'Keefe. I mean, James O'Keefe is Project Veritas. Have you uh, so? Look, let's let's just say uh, James O'Keefe ten years ago. I mean, he also did a, he, did a bad he also story. he also no, but he also did that thing where that was there was the um, that um, person who was dropping off uh, ballots in um, I think it was uh, Minnesota, Minnesota, yeah. and the person came out and said that he completely that, distorted that. What on, he said. They're on video doing it. Like, yeah, but, you but that's no, but that's that. but that's legal. That's okay to do what he was doing. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. You could drop off ballots. That's what oh, happened. Man, we got to pull up all the sources. Uh, yeah, he, <laughs> had, he, had, he had a car full of ballots. And said he was. What did he say? He's getting paid to drop them off. Awesome. I mean, that's that, that's illegal. Well, let's let me look it up. So you yeah, can, yeah, yeah, because you said that there so, was a... so. But but I'll put it this way. I'll, let, let's let's um, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll pull that up because I want to make sure we have that we have it all correct and everything. I know that there were there were uh, accusations against uh, James over that one. But my issue is just like, how many stories has Project Veritas put out? How many, how many real substantive issues have people criticized him over? And then I'll say, first of all, I'll put it this way. I'm pretty sure that was illegal because we covered that extensively. 
and we did we went through all the laws and stuff we can we can you no, know, please know, bring you up the phone look tapping up. You can look it up too and we'll, we'll make sure we get the facts right but uh man i don't understand why all of this is directed at a handful of stories Veritas does when you have every other day fake news coming out of the Washington Post. Because it keeps Times, happening, CNN. Tim. Huge Because he keeps too. fucking like up. Years -long span he makes up stories. He fabricates them. Some that result in a major loss. He's not too. a reputable like, source. You know, we still use He's a CNN, and the Washington Post, and the New York Times, despite the Covington kids' lawsuits that they're all being sued over and losing. Because we recognize that news organizations get things wrong. Unless there's evidence to suggest something was not correct about it, I don't understand why... We would not just hold the scrutiny of any organization. Uh, uh, oh, absolutely. Percent. That includes yeah, every so when, media. Yeah. So when you know CNN or the New York Times can come out and say sources say, or people familiar with Trump's thinking have confirmed, I'm just like, yo, the news, the news, like mainstream yo. press rolls with those, and Veritas published a video. Now, by all means, you can say the video is deceptively edited if you don't believe it's true, but. New York Times doesn't even put out who their sources are half the time. Well, They'll I say, mean, that's basic journalism. I mean, you could not trust corporate <laughs> media if you'd like. So what if James... But there, but there, but there are surely, there are surely uh, well-respected, specific reporters and journalists who have a track record of good work. What, what if James O'Keefe, instead of revealing the video, just said, we have a source within Twitter who has said this thing? Well, and, James... James O'Keefe is a known liar based on what we've previously heard about the settlements and stuff. So, I mean... Um, you better I, be... Hold on. I got I to gotta tell you. Uh... Back that up. I mean, he paid a settlement, $100,000 to this woman, and he admitted that he lied about what she said on the video. I'm in, sir. Thank you. As long as you're saying that that's true and you're willing to stand behind it. I mean, like he said it. Fact. He said it. I'm just in saying his that settlement. Cause, cause, he said it in his settlement. <laughs> I'm just saying that because James has basically sued every single person Back who has up. accused him, and he's won every single case. I mean, if he wants to d dispute the fact that he paid this woman a hundred thousand dollars because he said that he claimed that you know she didn't call the police when he came in with his pimp suit, claiming what he claimed, um, and she did, and he said he didn't know, but. She he put the video out. Didn't ask her, I guess, afterwards. Look, look, look. look. I can, you know, I can, I can. We can say yes, like it was wrong. Thing, but I mean, I mean, he, how he, does that discredit the story? What story? The, one, the, the Twitter story. Oh, all I'm saying is we don't know the whole the whole uh, conversation that went on there. I agree with that for sure. Um, so we have to go by what it's we also, have. It's also it's also like honestly, oh, this is a, a beanie very, bath. Like, Great job, bore. Matt. I mean, so the 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 um the accusation is that what that leftists won't tolerate the right. I mean, well, that's one of the one okay, of the but I mean, they're just they're just basically what are they doing? They're reporting a tweet for something that this right winger said that would either a not break Twitter policies, so there would be no punishment. Let's let's talk about the misgendering policy. There would then be misgendering policy. Right? Misgendering policy. Yep, that's Twitter's policy. Yep. Yeah, 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 absolutely, and yep. it's it's biased against conservatives. How is it biased against conservatives? Conservatives don't agree with the concept of misgendering. I mean, not a single one, right? I mean, it's basic respect, if you ask me. No, it doesn't matter if I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Well, that's if no, you ask you it, coming from no, a left-wing no, perspective, sure. right? But, but it's sure. not. A, I'm, I'm not making a moral statement. I'm sure. saying conservatives don't agree with the concept of misgendering, right? That's a fact. I mean, maybe there are conservatives that don't. I mean, that do agree. Well, but I mean, do you think conservatives agree with the concept of misgendering? I mean, vast majority, yeah, sure. You think they they agree that misgendering is a thing? No, no, they agree that they should have the right to misgender someone. Right. They don't believe it exists. You, you view it as they think they should be allowed to, but conservatives don't think it's a thing, right? right. So you've got, sure. you've got how many, with 74 million Trump voters, I'd say the overwhelming majority are like either don't know what it even means, or if you look at the staunch conservatives would outright say, well, we have to, possible. we have to, we have to be very specific here about, I'm, I'm all for someone learning and understanding and using the wrong language. I mean, I know plenty of people on the left. I do myself. Sometimes I use the wrong pronoun or whatever for someone who, uh, you know, does not identify as that gender. And if someone's coming at it in good faith and not meaning to, you know, to harm somebody or be, you know, be, well, uh, look, look, that's, but, but, but I don't want to deviate too much. Well, I, I mean, you, I, I mean, saying, I mean, I mean the, the issue but is, you brought up that there's conservatives who don't even know that's a thing. Now, if one of those conservatives does that thing on Twitter and then someone's just like, hey, you're misgendering me. And then they're just like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Dude. Or just or just dude. I mean, people say dude all the time. And Zuby got banned for it. He got a suspension for saying, OK, dude. Well, with the, so in, in what context did he, he say was, it? Though? Were, I mean, Zuby's he, not he, someone who doesn't know what misgendering is. He's someone he wasn't who clearly misgendering. knows. He was saying dude in, a for, in an informal context. Like we say, OK, I mean, dude. I mean, I see this here's week. the point. Here's the point. You're making moral statement. I'm making more. I'm not making a moral statement. We know conservatives don't agree. We know the left does. Twitter has a policy that the left agrees with the right doesn't. Bring up Therefore, the context, Tim. Bring up the tweet. Against the right. 
That's 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 a, a simple fact statement. I mean, if you're some if you're coming from if you're coming from the position that um, if you don't agree that this is a thing, I mean, oh, that, or, then I mean, tw Twitter is saying it's a thing. Like it's their platform. They're saying this right, is right, a thing right, on right. our you're platform. You're misunderstanding. How am I misunderstanding? It, it, it does. It's not. I'm not making a moral statement. Okay. I'm not saying Twitter is right or wrong. Twitter is well within its rights to have whatever rules it wants. Sure. Conservatives disagree with the concept. Uh, uh, progressives agree with the policy. Twitter's rules suit the view of the left and not the right. That's I mean, simply put. Twitter's deciding to make those rules. I mean, I don't Absolutely. know what the We agree yeah. on that. Yes, yeah, Okay. Yeah. So if conservatives don't agree with those rules, Twitter's rule set is biased against the conservative worldview. I mean, there's all sorts of rules I don't agree with, too, but that doesn't mean they're biased against my worldview. That's just what they decide I mean, to— the misgendering thing is, is clearly cut. Obviously, if we, could, if we want to nitpick, you can talk about the, the various right-wing factions and what they believe. I mean, if you don't, if you don't agree wrong? that trans people exist when they clearly do, then I don't know. Jeff, thank you very much. I, mean, I don't know who said that on the right. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I'm I mean, on the right. Look, I, I don't believe in the concept of transgenderism. Uh, I don't believe there's a difference between <laughs> gender and sex. Concept. And I would say that Tim is making a it's descriptive a statement. He's not saying that it's good or bad that Twitter has this specific policy. He's just saying that on the issue of transgenderism, Twitter has clearly taken a side. And their side is that a person's gender identity is a concept which supersedes their biological identity. Okay, that is but, a decision they made as a platform, which is a politically biased decision. I mean, they're basically saying trans people exist, though, because if yeah. you take that away, it, then what is? I mean, broadly what you, respecting I, what society quite, acknowledges. I mean, I know point. what you're arguing, but you're basically saying it's biased against conservatives to admit that trans people exist by no, Twitter. No, 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 that's, that's not what they're doing. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. How's they're not pretty, saying trans so, people so, exist. They're saying you are forced to acknowledge that you believe this identity is no, no, their identity, no, 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 even if you don't agree with that, or else you're not on the platform. Yeah, because that's what the, the misgendering policy they're is. They're not even saying that. They're saying you have to use this Seems language. Seems like, no, 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 no don't, don't prove them right. Okay. Conservatives <laughs> say, I do not believe in the use of that language. And it's overt. I mean, it, I would say nine, not, uh, so you don't want to acknowledge that trans people exist. would be like, I'm not going to use preferred pronouns. If Twitter's rules are in line with your worldview or a progressive worldview, they're biased against conservatives. I, I don't think we're arguing. I think we agree on that. I mean, I, I don't think it's biased against conservatives, to be quite honest, but we could go in circles on this or we could just, you know, it's up to you. So you think conservatives are, uh, you're, not making, you're, you're not making sense, man. He's breaking down. Someone, we know conservatives mis like don't <laughs> use the concept of misgendering. We, we know conservatives they will use call it all the time it's why tucker right? carlson yes. was banned it's why Therefore, charlie kirk was, was suspended not, they, they are, both are, are, deleted are the tweets fitting what conservatives do and think on a daily basis i mean you could it argue is, it is over it is like it's one plus one equals two it's like just right there in front of you i mean you could argue that about anything though like what what do you mean like what like you can't say the n-word on twitter and and do conservatives want to say the n-word yeah <laughs> oh please <laughs> they do <laughs> Not all are conservatives, but they're, the subsection of Twitter that does want to is certainly on Hell the right. Yeah. There are Hell people yeah, who man. like using bad words on the right. There are people who like using bad words on the left. If you want to, like, you, we're not going to. I'm not going to make a blanket statement that every leftist wants to advocate for Antifa going and killing people, but there are certainly Antifa that go around advocating for killing people, right? How many people have advocated for killing libs of TikTok? A large amount. We can pull up tweets. How many people have advocated for phys serious physical harm to Andy? No. I'm not going to sit here and say everyone on the left wants to violently harm, you know, Andy. No, oh, there are people who did it. There are good and bad people. The issue is, if Both you go sides. to some of the most prominent conservatives like Ben Shapiro, he will say, I do not use preferred pronouns. He intentionally sure. misgenders He's people. He's got one of the top podcasts in the world. And Twitter's rules conflict with one of the biggest podcasts you, in the you world. Don't, and, you, and don't, you, don't, you don't have to use someone's pronouns at all, though. And that's not I mean, representative we of, talk about that of humanity. What are you name? talking about? I mean, but I'm not make, like I said, I'm not making a moral statement. If, okay. if Ben Shapiro wants to You're not making he, any statements. He can't or he'll be banned. Well, I mean, that's just Twitter's rules. Twitter's, right. Yeah. Twitter's rules fit the leftist worldview, not well, the Well, I mean, if a, if a left winger also wants to do that, then they can't either. Right, but the left tends to agree with that perspective. It's the leftist worldview, or it's, it's a component I of mean, it. I mean, yes, left people agree that trans people exist. I mean, I, Who's I, arguing they don't exist? Why do you keep saying that? Because <laughs> if you're not going to basically uh, acknowledge someone's gender identity, then you're saying they're not, that trans people don't exist. But what, what does that mean, trans people don't exist? I mean, that someone's not trans. What do you mean? What, so 
Seamus can argue, uh, what do you say, transgenderism doesn't exist or what? Yeah, I don't believe gender and sex are, I, I don't believe like in the concept of gender, it was developed, the coin was, the, the term was first coined by Dr. John Money, who was like a pedophile and sex pervert who abused children and created this idea that we can make um, this, this false go. distinguishing between a person's actual biological sex and the sex they should be treated as within society. I don't think it's a legitimate concept. Well, I believe and I agree that there are people who struggle with their identity, I think there are people who are deeply confused about their sexual identity. I do not believe a man can ever become a woman or that a woman can ever become a man. I don't. Okay. Yeah, Listen, I, I, if that's what you believe. All right. But I mean, I don't know the information that you just said in terms of I'm like, I can look it up. But, yes. um, uh, you know, people do suffer from gender dysphoria. Well, that's, well, that's a sure. real that's a right, real right, right, that's right. a real thing. Absolutely. And, and, it is. and yes. every, everybody agrees those people exist. Yes. So why do you keep saying trans people don't exist? Because it, what do you, wait, hold on. you're saying that gender dysphoria. Real exists. Thing. Yeah, it's Absolutely. a real thing. It's a real oh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're saying that the actual outcome, what they're looking to do to actually uh, treat their wrong. gender dysphoria, this is so important. It's not a real thing. Well, no, 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 no. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. That's what trans, I trans people <laughs> exist, and will. Uh, and uh, I've met Trump supporting uh, uh, trans women, sure, sure. Uh, and and hackers and leftists and right wingers. Space robot thing. Of course, they you. exist. Of course, gender dysphoria is real. Tr they're trans women. They have preferred pronouns and. Sure. Whether or not you compel someone to use those words has nothing to do with saying they exist. Then or you not. don't acknowledge it. If you refuse to use anyone's pronouns or just refuse to even call them by their name, I mean, I don't just. I mean, I don't know what to say to you. I mean, I mean, if just, I called you Florbo, would that, would that be denying your existence? If I if you called me Florbo, yeah. If I'm if I used a pronoun for you that wasn't your preferred pronoun, am I denying your existence? I mean, personally, it wouldn't bother me, but that's just me. But, but am I denying your existence? Are you denying my existence? It's yeah. I mean, people could argue it's disrespectful. For if sure. you were a woman but and you say you're a man, existence? you are denying well, their trans, trans identities or trans existence. Ex yes, acknowledge that they have that they. Their, their uh, you know, their birth name or given name is what they, you know, that's not them. I, I, I'm, I'm, do you? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, you're saying they're claiming trans people don't exist. That's like a, a buzz phrase with no meaning. You've, you've conveyed no idea to anyone. What are you talking about? What idea are you trying to convey when you say conservatives say trans people don't he, exist? He what is that supposed it. to mean? What do you mean? What's that supposed to mean? If you're, you're I, I, we're, let's we're, go, let's go, let's go back to the original thing that you were talking about. Twitter's policy, and you're saying it's purposefully. Um, I, I didn't say biased. purposely. Okay, I, it's I, I, biased. No moral statement. Sure. It's, it is a it's, rule set that the world wants to no moral the right statement. doesn't, and therefore is biased against the conservative worldview. Okay, and if Twitter did not have that policy, then it would be biased against trans people. No, it wouldn't. It would it? Be, well, no, it would be unbiased, right? If Twitter had a policy which said, um, if, if Twitter had no policy on what pronouns you could use for someone, that would not be biased. That would just be like the lack of a policy altogether. Yeah, the left would lack, still be... Lack of policy You're, could be biased. No, 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 no. The, the inversion would be... Twitter saying you are not allowed to use preferred pronouns, right? Bring, bring up like so civil once, rights. What, the conservative the protectionism's don't there. Want to is, refer is that to bias? Trans women by she, her, right? Okay, they could just not refer to trans women that way. So, but you'll get banned on Twitter. Just you do not have to go after a trans person. So here, here's, here's my point: if you can exist Twitter on Twitter removed, without attacking a trans person if Twitter, by calling them. But by, again, this is look, this look, is a left wing if, framing that it's attacking someone to not use the pronouns that affirm this idea that they're, they're something that they're not. The what, point. The point is the rules. It's if I started calling you she, for example, that, that would, would be completely you. incorrect because you. I'm not a woman. Yes, I'm a man. Not, I've been that, a man my whole life, you. and even yes, if I decided to identify as a woman, I still would not become a woman. But I would have so the common. Point. I, if, but if you did, though, I have the common respect to refer to you by your gender identity. So I, I absolutely believe that you are coming at this from a place of respect. But I don't think it's respectful to indulge something that's not well, true. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, we're deviating way too far. The point is... <laughs> Tim doesn't want to be on that Twitter's side. Twitter's rules. Overtly biased. If Twitter removed the rule, there would be no bias because there's no rule. If Twitter created a rule that said trans people are not allowed to use preferred pronouns, that would be biased in favor of conservatives. If Twitter also made a rule that said that, you know, you can now use the N-word. Who do you think that affects? Who's that biased against? That's biased against people who, uh, black people. Yes. Right. <laughs> you have to think about but it. Is there a policy saying you're a, like, the, the, the issue Correct is, him. The issue is Twitter, uh, negative rights, positive rights, uh, cetera, Correct cetera. him. Twitter is saying, here's a list of things you can't do, and it tends to be things conservatives do, right? Okay, I'm sorry that conservatives do things that tend to disrespect people. I mean, that, 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 that's I'm not making a moral judgment. If okay. you want to say they're, they're disrespecting that. people, I don't care. Right. I'm simply saying Twitter's rule set favors the leftist approach. All right, and I disagree. 
but that's that, that's phys- that's impossible. I'm not making a I'm not making an opinion statement. I'm making a fact statement. <laughs> I I just don't agree. I mean, we know. I, I don't understand. How, how is this possible? This, we could take Twitter specifically how they work. They tend to the algorithm tends to um, write uh, 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 platform content on the right all the time. Well, they platform I mean, you, everybody all the time. No, 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 you get you. They recommend right wing content more often than not. That's one hundred percent. Who does? True. Uh, any social media platform that you could th- uh, Facebook, um, Twitter. Thank you you are wrong. Uh, <laughs> let me let me try. YouTube's and, another one. Yeah, let, you, uh, you are let wrong. me let me try and pull Impossible. up the. Uh, let's see if I can find the article. You know, one one of the challenges Matt was on doing fire here. Like, by the way, we great sit down segment. and we talk about is we're always trying to you know figure out where we saw something and and all that stuff. So let me see if I can uh, <clears throat> find this. Oh, does it want me to buy this? Muckrack is trying to sell me the article. Uh, let me see if I can. You know, all these conservative sites article. are behind paywalls. What's going on By a here? Researcher named Mark Ledwich. Twitter that algorithms bias toward right wing content. Says who? Twitter's own research. And what, and what did they say? And why did they say? Uh, Twitter is publicly sharing <laughs> research findings so much today. Faster. from protocol uh, that show that the platform's <laughs> algorithms amplify tweets from right wing politicians and content from right wing news outlets more than people in content from the political left. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, Matt. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm trying to pull up this Mark Ledwich. <laughs> so I see this from the Washington Post. October 22nd, 2021. <laughs> Twitter rolled. algorithms amplify conservative content more than that of the political left. Researchers find. Who are the researchers? <laughs> An internal evaluation of Twitter's recommendation algorithms concluded that they amplify right leaning political content more than left leaning content. Company researchers announced Thursday undercutting allegations by many conservatives who contend they are being censored on the platform. Now, that statement is, is just confusing and factually incorrect. Twitter can promote conservatives, but it doesn't mean You know what you guys at the bottom of this? Elon Musk? Why don't you ask him to uh, find out more information about this study? Agreed. There you uh, go. If conservatives are complaining about being censored, the fact that Twitter promotes some conservatives doesn't mean conservatives aren't being censored. The fact that Twitter would promote more conservatives doesn't mean some conservatives aren't being censored. So it's Washington Post point. But uh, we'd have to... The research in months of the making, part of Twitter's promise to evaluate, evaluate the underpinnings, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm trying to see what the meat of what they're actually saying is, and it, don't seem to, it doesn't seem to be in the article. They said they analyzed millions of 2020 tweets by elected officials in seven countries, Canada, France, Germany. Oh, okay, so it's not an American thing. As well as posts that, oh, come on. All right, I can debunk this in two seconds for you. Okay, go ahead. This is so beautiful. All right. From the New York Times, what happens to America's political center of gravity? As you can see, the right-leaning platforms, uh, the right-leaning political parties in Europe are to the left of the Republican Party. So when you say Twitter is amplifying right-wing content, it's like, okay, okay, in America, yes or no? The answer is no. Because the parties that were getting amplified, European parties, are to the left of the Republican Party. I mean, so you, so it's to the right of you. That's a fair point. It's to the left of the American uh, uh, conservative. Well, that's a major statement that you have to probably check with uh, the, you know, the, the researchers who put together this study. Um, well, they specific. You know, well, I'm showing you right here. I mean, the you, you, the New York Times. You, you specifically yourself. I mean, um, have what 1.2 million Twitter followers? Right? Yeah, and what what am, what's my what's my political affiliation? Oh, your political affiliation, right? What we should it? talk about that, right? Oh. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you are exactly what you claim you are. What what am I? Um, you know, I would say you're a pretty much um, conservative. What makes me conservative? What makes you uh, a liberal? Uh, well, traditional liberals in this country, uh, specifically social liberal. Uh, is where I've always been, voted for Obama in 2008. A lot of people voted for Obama in 2008 and then moved over to Trump. We've, we've established that. So I voted for Trump in 2020. Yeah, there you go. Right. So uh, traditional liberals. All those liberals who voted for Trump. Nine know? million in this country. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't and, consider and, them liberal. And substantially more. Uh, <laughs> Donald Trump is. You're talking about Democrats, not liberals. No, they're liberal. Uh, Donald Trump is a New York, a New York liberal. Like Donald Trump unfurled an LGBT flag on the RNC stage <laughs> and got Republicans to clap for it. Oh, sure. Okay. So uh, I'm pro-choice. Uh, well, I'm, we could talk about that. Yeah, I'm pro-progressive tax. Uh, I'm pro-Green New Deal. Uh, Are you? Oh, yes. Really? Absolutely. Really? I, I don't think you watch the show. I No, I have watched the show. I've seen you completely come out and get really mad at uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez for some yeah, of the things for, in the Green New Deal. Do you mean like free college for black people? Did you read the Green No, I did, but that's Come that on. that that's what bothers you? Uh, what bothers me <laughs> is that when I advocate for environmental policy, having worked for several environmental And I don't think and also I don't think the policy says free college for black people. No, 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 it's it's it's, it's free college, it's free healthcare for marginalized and oppressed communities. What does that have to do with wind turbines? 
What are you talking about? It's everything to do with the environmental situation we're going to be in. No, that's race policy. That's identity. No, it's not. Who do you, what, what do you think happens when climate change affects the United States of America? Who do you think is going to be the most affected by it? Who's not going to be able, like Ben Shapiro said, Poor who's not going to be able to just get up, sell their house that's going sailing out to the sea and going underwater like Ben Shapiro said? Not Eckelman. Um, who's going to be able to uh, easily get themselves out of a situation that sees their neighborhood getting flooded, their neighbor, their, you know, you know they're going to lose what they currently have. It's not going to be the wealthy. It's not going to be people who are in a comfortable situation who can just get up and move. It's going to be people who don't have means. So when and we so lift people out of poverty, we'll be able to more, uh, better address climate change issues when they arise. Just, just to go back real quick, I did find the data showing that YouTube overwhelmingly <laughs> uh, sends content to the left um, and not the right. So that you have to send this to me because this yeah. goes against every piece of research I've ever read about YouTube. I, I, I will I will say outright one of the challenges with any kind of first Monday is that org. you're going to everyone's going to find their sources. You know what I mean? Well, where's your source from? This is firstmonday.org. This is an academic named Mark Ledwich who worked with a series of other academics. They've they've mapped out. Look, they got me as anti. I like how we had to pull this up for a conversation they were having. And what they did was they they grouped everything by a whole bunch of different um, channels. There's like white identitarian. There's partisan right. There's conspiracy. There's social justice. There's center left. Mainstream media, and then they created parents for what typically socially falls into a left or right category, and then they created this uh, uh, recommendation uh, trend map, showing you partisan left content typically recommends partisan left content. Center content typically recommends partisan, uh, I'm sorry, typically recommends center content. However, when we're talking about who's getting recommended the most, from the center, you're more likely, twice or three times as likely to get partisan left content than partisan right content. So if you go- What do to, they consider left-wing content? Uh, socialist, social justice, what, what, partisan left. What, what is that? Like, what, what are we talking about here, though? Because there's right-wingers and there's all sorts of people- who view NBC and CNN and other corporate no, that's, media? No, that says center left, left mainstream media. Okay, well that's center left mainstream media. Okay, Cent center slash left mainstream. Oh, media. it's its own category, is what you're saying. So, so they mean like your TV networks, the news they report, and like overwhelmingly anti-Trump, for instance, uh, comedy specials and things like that. If you go on YouTube and you watch Jimmy Kimmel, you are the most likely to just see more Jimmy Kimmel. But when it comes to the political direction information flows, as you can see from Mark Lightwich's research, and there's, there's a couple other researchers, sorry if I'm not reading their names. Uh, you, I mean, it, it looks like three or four to one, you're more likely to get partisan left-wing content than right-wing content. Well, that goes you're against also, every research. I've, here's one, for example. Now, now, here, from, now, check this out, check this out. Huh? Also, if you are watching partisan right-wing content, you are more likely to be recommended center or mainstream content than if you were on the left. In, for the same number. It's, it seems somewhat comparable, but considering the partisan left receives 99.5 million daily impressions to the partisan right 68.6, it's a disproportionate amount of recommendations in favor of partisan left. All right, well, I need to see that study in front of me because I, anyway, I could easily just pull up another one that just says, you know, more than 330,000 videos and nearly 350 YouTube channels were analyzed and manually classified, uh, labeled as either media or what we think of as factual news, alt-light, intellectual, dark web, or alt-right. And then it found that uh, YouTube's algorithm funnels people to alt-right videos. But by, by how much? I mean, it does. Um, it, yeah. a, that's a fact statement. We, sure. We, we, it, it absolutely does. Now, Twitter... Um, diminished alt-right channels and banned most of them. They cut them all off from the recommendation algorithm. So the time period in which YouTube did that, uh, uh, that study w would be important. But also, yeah, absolutely, YouTube recommends everything. YouTube does recommend alt-right content for sure. They banned a lot of it. Uh, the issue is, and in, in large uh, amounts, like if a regular person goes on YouTube and watches Jimmy so the journal that Tim Poole is referring to, the journal is sponsored and hosted by the University of Illinois at Chicago. It is published on the first Monday of every month. In 2011, the journal had an acceptance rate of 15%. That's wild. It was a study used by Alex Jones. <laughs> hey, Kimmel. Are they more likely to fall into a left or right wing rabbit hole? The data shows the left. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's, look, that uh, study is true. But, but I mean, look, look, look. It, but I mean, it, how it, often is someone who's watching Jimmy Kimmel going and looking for more political videos? I'm assuming they're going to be looking for more entertainment content. Right. Which is why the overwhelming majority. So, so if you look at the left on this chart, for those that are. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mark Ledwich, one of the authors of the uh, report that he's talking. <laughs> Tech QAnon crackdown was a huge mistake. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Tim. Oh, man, this is going to look bad in hindsight. <laughs> Watch it, can you pull it up? So if you look on the left, you can see there's a purple bar. On the right is another purple bar. The As you can see, do you, do you see the purple? Across, do you see it? That represents yeah. the overwhelming majority of people who mm -hmm. watch center or left mainstream media will only be recommended center or left mainstream media. I wish Matt had us left, right now. We could easily send him this stuff. Down. That represents how many people from a mainstream media video will go to a partisan left. Yeah, I'll, I'll DM As Matt. I wonder see, if he's checking his DMs. The, the, the line representing the data is substantially larger going to the left than the right. When you look at from a partisan right wing video to the center, the line is comparable from the partisan left to the center, meaning partisan right gets two thirds, gets 60 percent of what 68 uh, uh, percent of what the left gets in terms of views, but has an equal amount of people being recommended away from partisan right wing content, showing the left is favored, um, whether inadvertently or on purpose on YouTube. So we can talk about Twitter. We can talk about this stuff. And again, I will stress to everybody who's, who's watching or listening. We've had conversations. We had Alad Eliyahu on, and he pulled up Pew, which said most people are mm. pro-choice. And then I pulled up Gallup, which said most people want restrictions on abortion. You're always going to find some data, and, and it's and it's hard to know what's true, but everybody has their well, sources. Well, and there is an issue I just came up, I just found about this specific study that you're talking about. This is the one with Mark uh, Ledwich, right? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, I just sent it all to him. Basically. Well, let me pull up exactly what we got here. Okay. To examine what YouTube's algorithm recommends to viewers. Ledwich and Zeitzev well done, chat. went well through done. those channels' videos and scraped each one's recommendation data. So they were able to see what YouTube offered in the up next box to people watching each video. However, Ledwich and Zaitsev crucially did this while not logged into a YouTube account because YouTube had no personalization data to go off of. Each box of up next recommendations that served Ledwich and Saitsev was a generalized blank slate collection of videos. The algorithm is literally incapable of introducing <laughs> an anonymous <laughs> logged out user to increasingly radical content. This is from TubeFilter. How many, how many of YouTube's viewers are logged in and have, have accounts? Oh, wait, we should check that out too. So the issue is this reach I'm talking about. Good solidarity. I mean, Good solidarity, everybody. The average person, will they be fed left wing or right wing content? And that doesn't disprove anything I said. So basically, and nor does it provide any evidence in the contrary. I mean, it looks like if that you're logged in that uh, based on user data and recommendation data, then it does seem like they funnel to people to more right wing content based well, on what's your other source, studies. Though? But the study I brought before. What study? Well, and I just I, I mentioned it before. You know, one of, one of the issues, too, is we're both we're going to run into this and I don't think we'll have an answer for this is who's doing the study. There was a study that uh, <laughs> like. To be clear, all right, Matt has been providing a number of different data sets to back up his arguments, and then Tim Pool found one that he latched onto, and Matt was like, okay, so I'm going to debunk this one in real time. There you go. And Tim Pool keeps referring to, ah, every time we do this, you know how this is. You have a study. I have a study. We There's all studies, but where does the truth truly lie? That's what we need to find out. We'll, we'll say something not true about The guy's me, a QAnon apologist. Not true about you. It's a fucking trying to get Alex Jones tier source. This is, the, this is the big challenge with trying to figure out data in this regards. There was a study that came out that claimed I was like, uh, like ANCAP far right or something, which is just like, I don't even know how they come up with that. I mean, come on. If, if someone wants to accuse me of being a conservative based on modern tribalism, we'll have an argument. But ANCAP right wing, I was just like. <sighs> so I, I can Wait, certainly. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just came out because I, uh, I looked up the author of the study, Mark Ledwich. Yeah. I mean, he, he has a, um, looks like he's a QAnon defender. I don't, I don't, I don't. Know I mean, it well seems like, I, I mean, I wouldn't trust someone who believes in a conspiracy theory like QAnon, honestly. What about Russiagate? Um, yeah, what about, what about yeah. Russiagate? Why, what does Russiagate have to do with it? That what was us, QAnon chat. Do well done. Well, well done. done. The that author was, that was of the my study you're citing seems to be a QAnon believer. Fuck yeah. Look, whoa, 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 whoa. If I reference the study that, uh, <laughs> reference the study, give me the name, we'll pull up their QAnon BS. Come on. What are you talking about? I mean, you reference a study. You got, you can hear the guy's name. I don't know. You reference the study. Sure. If you want me to pull up their you, names and you find you and, and want me to pull up their Twitter accounts and find the stupid Hell yeah, things. we're changing this, history it, in look, real QAnon time. QAnon is not just like posting something stupid. QAnon is a whole belief set. People's whole worldview is based what is, on what is, this. What, is, what did he defend? What did he defend? Um, let's bring it up right now. I'll bring up the whole long medium blog, vote, blog post here. Um, yeah. hmm, let's see. We got uh, in the past few months, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube have been waging a war against QAnon. Um, a levianth of a conspiracy theory that uh, explains, among other things, that there's a deep state cabal of 
Jewish Satanist globalist democratic elites in government business and the media secretly controlling the world and running a global style check sex trafficking ring. Um, most recently, QAnon fans have claimed that COVID-19 is a hoax and that the U.S. election was rigged against Donald Trump. Social media giants recognizing these conspiracies were gobbling up a lot of engagement on their sites, took action in censoring them. Uh, and then he goes on. Where to, do you defend them? So it doesn't sound like he believes in it at all. He referred to it as a conspiracy theory. And then he also said. Well, yeah, QAnon. Q -Anon, Q -Anon, well, no, 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 no. But where, where do you defend them? Come on, pull that up. Sure. Where did he defend these guys? I don't think he did. Well, I'm looking through. The, it's a long piece. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't defend them. Mark Ledwich. Oh, here we go. Here we go. QAnon believers have already demonstrated their ability to do this very well. He's talking about um, basically uh, getting content out there and, uh, you know, um, getting their content out there even when they're already banned from Facebook. How is that defending? Their Hold ideas? on. Uh, when they hijack the hashtags, save the children, uh, save the children and save our children, a fundraiser for anti-trafficking charity. I mean, that's not what those two things were for. Those so are saying he's wrong. He's wrong about those were not yeah, fundraisers yeah, yeah. from on, anti-trafficking. You said he defended QAnon, and then you read a, an academic piece where he talked about them, not in favor of them. No, no, no. I just told you how he called the hashtag, the, the slogans they use online. He called them a fundraiser for anti-trafficking charity. And what, and, no, and, I think didn't he say they hijacked a hashtag right. which was for an anti-trafficking right. charity, like they or charity, like they stole it from? Right, them? they stole it from them. Um, that's not what I how I'm reading this, but maybe it is. Let me read it again. Uh, I, I it it seems he's not a defender of QAnon, dude. I mean, I've talked to this guy. He's not even political. Okay. He's like, if you, if you talked to him, then that means something you, you could give a, a more. Well, that's why I talked to him, because when he did the research and pulled it up, I asked him for comments and to clarify, clarify and, 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 and that's what we talked about. So, look, I, I, I will absolutely concede the issue is, like I mentioned, we had Alad on. He's a cool dude. And he referenced when it came to abortion, Pew Research mm -hmm. data. And I was like, well, that conflicts with what I read. And I pull up Gallup and Gallup had a different phrasing, which was slightly different. And then I was like, you know what, man, the challenge is everybody's fighting over politics and trying to win. And you're going to get researchers who try and argue both sides. So, like, if I show you a researcher who says the left gets favored, you're going to be like, what? How can that be? I've read research saying the otherwise. And I'll say the exact same thing to you. And then ultimately people are trying to figure out who's telling the truth. And it's, it's, it's damn near impossible. So that's, that's a reality. Let's I mean, move on. Let's I mean, I, on. I did ma na mention a, a major flaw with that study, though. I mean, it is, that Let's is a flaw. No, 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 that, that was the point I was making, though. Right. So it's not, it's, not the point you, it's not the point you wanted it to be. But my point was, if a regular person goes on YouTube, are they going to be fed in which direction? And the data shows the average person is fed to the left. Now, if you're talking about logged in users, we need to know how many of the average person who watches YouTube is logged in. It's actually relatively low. Uh, there's, I think, you know what, a billion. All right, chat, let's let's give Matt more information because he's he's got uh, he's got two on one right now where they're trying to drag him down and he's doing fucking amazing. So Mark Ledwich, look up, look up Mark Ledwich, find uh, find dirt. Views per month. No, 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 it's more than that. It's like 100 billion or something like that. Most people aren't logged in. Most people don't log in. So it's like when their cookies or whatever are in there, what are they being recommended? If you want to argue that logging in changes things, for sure, let's do an analysis on that. Maybe there's something to be seen. But what room. percentage of people is that relative to the average person? Thank you, let's, Hammer. Let's five, move two, on from four. this. Let's talk about abortion. <laughs> sure. Because uh, we have the story in the news. Well, we had the story. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Starbucks. And then we'll go into my, my tweet so we can talk about uh, the meat and potatoes here. Starbucks will cover travel expenses for employees' abortion and gender change treatments. Uh, Starbucks has announced that they will be covering eligible travel costs for employees and their family members to get abortions or gender change treatments if the services are not available within 100 miles of where they live. Quote, in 2018, Starbucks broadened its health insurance options for transgender partners to not only include gender assignment surgery, which had been covered since 2013, but also a host of procedures that were previously considered cosmetic, such as breast reduction and augmentation surgery, facial feminization, hair transplants, and more, the company said in a press release. So this is, Tesla did the same thing, actually. Tesla announced that if their employees need an abortion, they'll, they'll cover the costs. I think Amazon did this as well. But let's talk about, um, this is the news story to kick off what I actually want to get into, so forgive me for the ridiculous segue. But uh, I have a tweet here. Sure. I said, what happens if a woman is on the way to get an abortion at eight months, but goes into labor in the lobby of the abortion clinic and accidentally delivers the baby before it could be terminated? So let me explain the backstory as to why I tweeted this. I was having dinner with a friend in New York, and they said that they were pro-choice. And I said, uh, do you agree with abortion 
uh, after viability. Viability, of course, is defined as the point at which the baby can survive on its own. He said, uh, well, no, of course not, right? But like in the, in the first trimester, in the first several weeks, like it's the mother's decision. The government doesn't have a right. And I said, okay, okay. But you say pro-choice, right? So do you think that if like, would you, would you favor the Democrats position? And he assumed, yes, I would. I think the Republicans want to ban it and all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, they do. But the Democrats tried passing a bill that would legal, that would legalize in many states termination of the baby at up to nine months, up to uh, the point of birth. In Colorado, they've already legalized it. Kathy Tran in Virginia tried, uh, tried passing a bill. Uh, Ralph Northam uh, famously talked about it. So the bill proposed by Democrats that was recently voted down does include a provision, H.R. 3755, that says in uh, Section 3, Paragraph, uh, I'm sorry, Section 4, Paragraph 9, Section 4, of course, starts by saying, a, pa- uh, a patient has a corresponding right to receive such services without any of the following limitations or requirements. Section 9 says, a prohibition on abortion after fetal viability, when in the good faith medical judgment of the treating health care provider, continuation of the pregnancy would pose a risk to the pregnant patient's life or health. I showed this article to my friend and said, I have a question. If the baby is viable, why kill it? And he said, well, you wouldn't. And I said, what would you do? And he's like, oh, I, I don't know. And I said, okay. And he was like, no, maybe they're saying just end the pregnancy. And I was like, right, right, right. But that's not, induced labor is not abortion, is it? Maybe, maybe. Is that what you're saying? Because if you're saying induced labor or C-section is abortion, I think we're in agreement here. You can end the pregnancy, but preserve the life of the baby. The definition of abortion, according to Merriam-Webster, though, is the termination of a pregnancy, you know, following or directly related, uh, relating to the, uh, the death of the baby after the fact. So... I don't understand why they would have to create a law and try to pass it that would legalize abortion at all. If a woman is eight months pregnant and the doctor says, if you continue this pregnancy, you will die. Well, then they deliver the baby. They, 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 they have to remove the baby, right? Why kill the baby in the process when you can just remove it? Can you, can you read that for me one more time? So the, the important first segment, section, uh, uh, section of section four, uh, a general rule, A healthcare provider has a statutory right under this act to provide abortion services and may provide abortion services. And that provider's patient has a corresponding right to receive such services without any of the following limitations or requirements. Section nine reads a prohibition on abortion after fetal viability. When in the good faith medical judgment of the treating healthcare provider, continuation of the pregnancy would pose a risk to the pregnant patient's life or health. Sure. Okay. In terms of, and it even says uh, in the good faith, what was it? The good, good faith, good faith medical decision of the doctor, right? If you're carrying a baby up to uh, eight months, I mean, you want that baby. If it's, yeah. if it's a situation where it's the mother's health, um, then I mean, they wanted the baby. Well, so, so if, if the woman's at eight months pregnant, that's why I tweeted this. Right. And well, she, that's a little bit different from what you tweeted. A woman is at eight month pregnant, eight, eight month. So I'm saying the, the reason I tweeted that is because if a woman is at eight months pregnant, and she decides to terminate the pregnancy, aborting the baby. No, no, and you don't. You know, at eight months pregnant, you don't decide to terminate. You have to terminate because of medical reasons. Something's going on. So it's not There's a woman's decision. What are you talking about? Is it a woman's decision to terminate the pregnancy or not? I mean, if the for her own health, I mean, it's between her and her doctor, right? But is, are you saying it's not her decision? What do you? What, you, you I, I said if a woman decides to terminate her pregnancy. It's not like she just up and decided to go. I didn't terminate. say she up and decided. I'm saying if a woman decides to because terminate pregnancy. Because of medical issues. For any, any reason. Yeah, okay. I mean, but we, I think you have to add because right, of medical right, right. reasons. No, no, because no, it's important to be very specific huh? that people are not carrying a, carrying a, a you know, a, a, a fetus and, you know, for eight months uh, and then just going, eh, I don't know. That's not happening. There's, a, there's already restrictions I mean, they, that they say. Have. There's already restrictions that say at that moment. you Like, I mean, you know, Gaz, you know about Gosnell, right? Mm-hmm. Women were getting elective abortions at nine months. We're, we're talking, we're, but, but we don't need to, we don't need to argue edge cases. Uh, let me go back to my also, point. We don't need to. I, I yes. want to make a point here because health of the mother. So no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, man. I don't want to deviate from the mm-hmm. point because we're, we're, we're I, I have a sincere question based mm-hmm. on the law. An abortion is is legally defined as terminating a pregnancy of or relating to the end of the uh, ending the baby's life. The baby dies in the process, right? If a if if this if if you're saying okay. Well, abortions also happen when the, you know the baby has already died. There's been a miscarriage. Of course, yeah, right. So, so let me let me. This is I read you the law. It would legalize a woman, for for uh, the reasons of of health and good faith, to terminate the baby, 
up to nine months because of its viability. Viability extends from 21 weeks until the point of birth. So this bill would allow, it would actually legalize in many states, a baby just before birth being killed, like aborted, right? For medical reasons, if there's well, what necessary, medical reason? well, if a mother's life is in danger, or if there's something wrong with okay, the I, something, I, something, something's wrong with the the fetus. Well, I'm not, so it's talking about the life of the patient's life, and we're not talking about the fetus. Something's wrong with the fetus. I, I get it. Like the baby's already dead. The baby's already dead. Right. Here's my question. No one's carrying a baby for if eight a, months and then has to go. And that's then, that's not an argument. If if the doctor is saying no one does a thing <laughs> is not real what? because some people did Jim? and some people don't, and we're not talking about we're talking about the law. The law says. If a woman is pregnant, and for any reason, do you believe that for any reason a woman has a right to terminate her pregnancy? Me personally, yeah. yes, I believe it's a woman's body. Up she to nine months. Right to do... What's that? Up nine, to nine months. months. Yeah. So you think a woman who's pregnant uh, with a baby at nine months, she can say, "Snip its neck." I mean, we have laws that basically say they can't just up snip and snack. I mean, that's a really weird th- way to put it. Do you think so? Do you know how they perform abortions on, yes. on late term? Yes. Where they send the, the the forceps in and cut the spinal column. You think that's okay? For a baby who is eight and eight, 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 eight months and two weeks in a woman's womb. But they're not doing No one is just Gosnell selectively did. doing that. You're, you just said you're not going to talk about edge cases. And then you're but going around talking about edge cases. You're, you used, I mean, when, he, when you he, said no one do, does that, I'm going to give you an example of it happening. I'm not trying to argue that you are. So no, the issue is I'm not it talking does about, happen. I'm not talking Should it be legal? You said yes, right? Here's my question. Let me, let me ask you the question. Go and ahead. please, if the woman is told by a doctor, if you continue with the pregnancy, you will die. Right. Should they kill the baby? At eight months? Yes. If they if the mother is told that she will die and there's no way at eight months, we're talking eight months, this woman wants the this right. woman wants okay. the baby. They'll they'll do whatever they can to save it. This the is baby. a tragedy. That's not the law says. The law allows for the termination of the baby. It says the good faith it says the doctors uh, you know, and the doctor. I'm will not be able arguing to, the woman's not sick. If a woman is sick at eight months, the baby is viable. It says after fetal viability. And the doctor says, if you continue with the pregnancy, your health is at risk. Do you believe it should be legal at that point to kill the baby? But that's not happening. You're that, talking, are, yes you're talking no. about... I'm not asking. I'm, I'm saying yes or no. Do you think it should be legal? <laughs> They're trying to legalize it. It doesn't matter if it's happening. Yes They're trying no. to legalize it. Yes or no. They're trying to legalize the fact that women at eight months pregnant could find out something is horribly wrong with the fetus, where it will die as soon as it's born, be in pain, have Can tragic... Can you answer the question or not? I'm answering the question to you No, right no, no, now. no, because you're saying something I, I agree with no. you on and no one disagrees with you on. Everyone wants to what? preserve the health of the mother. Sure. Why kill the baby in the process? They're not killing the baby in the process. Why legalize the killing of the baby you? in the process? They're not legalizing... Yes, they are. Read the law. I read it to you how many times? After fetal viability, <laughs> the baby can survive on its own. So they on can this perform an abortion if the mother's health is at risk. Why kill the baby? Why not include in that... All efforts must be made to save the baby's life. It's right there when it says the the, the exact wording. I don't have it in front of me Where? because I have my the do, what the doctor said. The good faith efforts of the doctor. The doctor's looking for out for bu- the patient, not the baby. Abortion is the termination of the baby. If it wasn't about legalizing the killing of the baby, they would say perform a C-section or induce labor. You dumb fuck! Because it could pose a threat to the mother. That, like, it, do you understand what is taking place here? What the fuck are you saying? This is so weird. When they're what, what this is right here, it says they cannot prohibit. A- she wants to have the kid. This is not like a, a, an abortion in the same way that someone chooses to have an abortion to not have a child. This is an abortion to save a life rather than both of them die. Abortion. Later, abortion is a practice with legal definitions where the baby is killed, its limbs are removed, and it's sucked out. If the mother, if the baby is violent, and do you see the way that he's talking about this? He's trying to get a moral outrage out of his audience to have them be like, "Oh, that's fucking disgusting." They want, mur- they want to murder babies. They want to like suck them out and, and cut off their limbs. What are you talking about? This is an unbelievable tragedy. This is something that is going to be devastating to the mother. The mother does not want to have to make this choice. Why this, not? This is not just the moral victory you think it is. Or perform a C-section. In fact, when Hassan quoted my they- tweet, that's what his followers said. Apparently, they disagree with you. I mean, if they can do that, they would do that at eight months for sure. Certainly. Then why legalize? Why? I just explained to you because it needs to happen sometimes for the health of the mother or for the, the, the child. Killing the baby. Yes. If it needs the, to happen. 
if the, there's something terribly horrible wrong this? with a child, which is going to grow you up agree, and immediately die or be in horrible pain for hours before dying anyway. Would then, you agree with a provision added to this bill saying all efforts must be made to preserve the life of any baby after viability? I mean, you're asking for exactly what's there, but if that makes you happy, <laughs> then I'm sure. Then. That's, but that's not what's there. That well, what's so, there. So, 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 so we agree. <laughs> we completely agree 100%. I mean, except for you saying a woman should decide on late-term abortion. No, you just didn't know what it was, Tim. But so, so we That's agree like, this bill should have You thought people were giving, like, taking abortions I mean, at I eight months. I think it's there. I think it's there. That's my opinion. I think it says it right there. Which which part do you think says it? They I'm must, tell, they I, must preserve already, the life of the baby. We've already went over this a hundred times. It says right in the... You think the doctor is not looking out for both the mother and the child? They are. I think oftentimes the doctor's looking out... They're not even. They're not really looking out for either. I think in many cases they're trying to make money. So, uh, like well, that's partial. Just, par, I mean, that's partial. Just, well, that's I have numbers for you. Though. I have numbers for you. Partial birth abortionist John McMahon says the primary reason given for those requesting a late-term abortion is depression. Uh, the Guttmacher Institute, which is a pro-choice think tank, said that they surveyed women obtaining late-term abortions. They found that only about one percent of second and third trimester abortions are performed for fetal anomalies which is another way of saying like eugenics, there's a disability, so we kill them. Real, real one quick. third of the women said that they misjudged how far along they were. One fourth said they found it hard to arrange an earlier abortion. 14% that they were afraid to tell their parents or their partner. And the rest gave reasons such as taking their time to decide or waiting for a change in their relationship. I will status. also add the CDC defines abortion as a termination of a pregnancy that does not result in live birth. Mm. So my question is, why do the Democrats try to legalize the killing of a viable baby without any protections? I mean, I don't know. What you're, I mean, I'm I mean, telling you right look, there. Look, look, it says look. right there exactly. But you're what, in favor of late-term abortion. I think it's up to a mother, uh, a woman, and her doctor. So I actually agree with uh, the initial Roe v. Wade. Uh, I, I guess. I mean, have you read Roe v. Roe v. Wade? Of course. Yeah. The, the so you know about the limitations on the second trimester. Yeah. You, so, so you know about the limitations. Of course. Yes. But so, do you agree with that? What do you mean? That's the law of the land, for now. What, so, so you actually, you just told me that you think a woman should be able to choose to ter terminate the baby at nine no, months. No, I did. I said, the decision of what happens to a pregnant woman is up to her and her doctor. That's let all me, I'm let, telling you. Let me ask you a question: If there was a baby on a table, and someone grabbed a pair of you know uh, bolt cutters and put it mm -hmm. to its neck, would you stop them? Yeah, real. You're talking that about a live person, right? I'm talking about a baby right just born. Right yeah, that's spot. murder. Right? Jim. That's that's a person. You're, what you're if the baby was murder. coming out of the woman? And then they snip its neck. What do you, what do you, what, 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 what <laughs> doing that? Gazelle did it. You're don't do, don't you, say, you, don't give me an absolute said. and then tell me not to make an edge point. <laughs> don't say no one did it when someone did it. The point is, I'm asking you moral questions on where your position is. I thought you were a moralist. I, I thought you avoid you moral questions. Because I don't understand. So if the baby was delivered, you're saying. He's trying to get the moral high ground. Now He's pro-choice, by the way. My tweet. If the woman was intending to abort the baby at eight months and went into an early labor while she was going to the abortion clinic to save her life tim you dumb fuck it's to save her life that's why she would do it there's not an enormous amount of cases of women deciding at the eighth month of pregnancy holy shit i don't want this what have i done i've made a huge mistake time to go get an abortion that's not what is happening here and the baby was born right there in the lobby could she not kill it now well, if she had the baby as she was going to get her eight-month abortion, there's something horribly wrong with that baby. I hope it's not in pain because they were. She was going to. Can you the, answer the question? I just. Talk, I'm going I'm talking about it. I right said, now. can. Okay. Oh, can she? If the baby is born, no, because that's a person. So what if? So now let's move backwards. The baby is a person the moment it's born, right? Is that what you're saying? Yes. What if the baby is halfway out? Halfway out. Like, so do you know how they do late term abortions at, at the point of birth? Partial. Partial birth abortions. The baby is coming out and they kill it as it comes out. Okay? Th that's literally what they do. Bro, I believe women have the right to choose within the first trimester and, and partly into the second trimester because the government can't Citation mandate needed? someone else give their body to someone else. Like, the challenge I have as a traditional liberal and social liberal is when you start introducing the rights of secondary this is, persons. This is the first the equation, I've heard like of the uh, baby murders. The privacy rights of the, the baby baby's coming out of the mother the and they're like, all right, cut it, These set off. These questions are difficult to answer. So my position has always been safe, legal, rare. The first baby guillotine? Like, what are you woman, talking about? Even though I really don't like the idea of abortion as contraception. So I, you, like, you like where it is contraception? Right what are you talking about? That's a hard thing to say considering all the states have different no, laws. No, I think it's a very easy thing to say because you said safe, legal, and rare, right? That's Which states? 
I don't like where it's not, but because Colorado legalized nine month partial birth, mm. birth abortion. Kathy Tran in Virginia tried doing the same. I don't know where they went on that. And Ralph Northam actually said the baby would be delivered. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Do you think at eight months you're just like, well, you know, as a form of contraception, I should probably get an abortion. I've been putting it off for about eight months now, and this baby's been growing for some time. Oh, yeah, I'm pregnant. I totally forgot. I'm pregnant. Oh, yeah, I should sort this out. Let's go. Let's go to the doctor. And then maybe if I am induced to giving birth, he'll do the like the baby guillotine. We'll kill the baby on the way out. What are you talking about right now? And then they would decide or that's have a discussion. Not, that's not what he said. He was he talk, said, he said they would have discussion. He he was talking about if in the, there's context right before where he said that if there was something horribly wrong with the baby, like the baby's born in a vegetative state and is not going to live a life that you know it's not. I, going I to didn't live. say that. I, I didn't say that he didn't say that. He said, but you didn't you didn't say that he did either. What, so for one, we've played the video multiple times. What he said was this typically. So he's asked by the presenter. Kathy Tran presented a bill that would legalize abortion up to the point of birth. He said, typically this happens in instances of severe disability or deformity. And I will tell you what would happen. The baby would be delivered. It would be resuscitated if that's what they decided. It would be made comfortable. And then a discussion would happen. So my, my issue there is, well, I, I, I disagree. I mean, if, it's, if a baby is alive, I think every effort must be made to try and save its life. I think if a homeless person is bleeding and they fall onto the stairs of a, a hospital, the hospital absolutely must save that person's life. The same thing as a baby that's born with deformities or otherwise. I don't think you can see a person and be like, they're dying, we should kill them, whether it's a baby or otherwise. So the issue here is, I'm pro-choice. What, what was your feelings on the Terry Chavo case? Oh, I don't have strong opinions on that one. I mean, for one, you don't, you don't, I don't. You, don't, you just don't care. Well, I, I didn't say I don't care. Right. Said, it's a difficult moral question. I don't have the answers to. Okay, so who did, you, who did you think? Who who did you more to lean towards there? I'd probably say we would lean towards preserving the life of Terry Chavo, even though that's not what she wanted. Well, if that was the case, yeah, I don't I don't know enough about it. If she signed a, a do not resuscitate, I'd no, say, she literally she told her husband that she did not want to be left in a vegetative state. Then that's her right with the, signing a DNR. Absolutely. Then. But sure. this was according to her husband, and there was no formal paperwork, and her parents said we will take care of. Then her. you can't do it. If she had a DNR, I, I respect the DNR. It's her life. It's her choice. Uh, without a legal, without a legal, do not resuscitate. Then you have to defer the next of kin. As for abortions, the, 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 the husband would be that. Well, right. I mean, I'm not the boss of people. I'm not the I'm not the king. No, no, not, no, 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 no. Because we just we just we, the, the 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 thing that James just said, and then you agreed with, was that um, if she is in a vegetative state, mm -hmm. and the husband says that I was told by her that that's it. And then he brought up how there's no proof of that. The parents wanted her alive. They said they would take care of her. They're not the next of kin, though. The husband is. The husband has the ultimate decision of her, what, what, of her care. Right. Yes. I agree. That's not... The, I'm, well, I'm adding the context what? because he said if she signed paperwork. And if so I'm, I'm pointing out that that was next not the situation. Kin. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just so, making sure, just being 100% right. clear here. So social liberals is a reference to... So a, wait, do, so, do you, so do you think that you know, in the case of a child's health, that you know, and they are not adults, so they can't make decisions for themselves. Do you think the parent can make that decision for a child's health? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so if a baby is born in a vegetative state, mm -hmm. can the parent decide to put it out of its oh, misery great and not let it just tree. die a slow, agonizing death and say, "I am the next of kin. This is not how this life should be. We should just end that life and life support." No, you don't think that should be. No, the, the baby case. wasn't involved in a traumatic injury. Right, so there's there's there, there's questions. They were beyond. they were they were they were born with a a life altering could not even probably won't perhaps won't live, yeah. and Got you're saying man. it's okay for them to Got be him. in a vegetative state for who knows how long. Uh, they likely will die in a few months, maybe yeah. maybe even make it a year Hell in, yeah, in the hospital. Well done, yep. well you're done. You're saying Bravo. that Bravo. anything you want to, add, I, I think Slam there's a difference dunk. between someone who suffered. A so you don't think you don't think parents disease. have you don't think parents have the right to do what's best for their children? Well, let's this thing. Who said that? Can I? You just said that. No, let's. <laughs> Yes, that is. It's a parent's decision. If the baby is in a vegetative state and will never have any quality of life, the humane, caring, loving thing for a parent now to who's do. Now, argue, arguing edge cases. What are you talking about? You've, all I you've been arguing is edge cases. No, no, you this whole thing is an edge case. The Ralph I gave Northam you my thing. answer. The answer you is no. You brought up the, the Ralph baby, Northam thing. I'm, I gave you the answer. So you don't think I that. I clearly so, don't agree with the idea that a baby is born with deformity. You kill it. 
I clearly we're not talking about just we're, <laughs> to, we're <laughs> talking about you kill it. Like, we're not talking about with like a limp arm or something. We're talking about a do you, do you quality kill it as of being life birth? disability. So what's going on, Tim? Will never be able yeah, to no, have any care. quality right, of life. Right, right, right. I, See, I, I, don't, I don't. I can. I can say the same thing over and over again. I believe that we should not allow doctors to kill a baby, regardless. Uh, I think every effort should be made to preserve the life of the baby. Okay, so you don't think that people should have a right to die with dignity at all, basically? <laughs> Kathy Newman, we're not talking about that. If a woman, I think that's. Suffers, I think it all. I think it all really. If a woman like Terry together. Schiavo suffers a stroke, a disease, she's older and later in life, and she has the ability to make a cognitive decision, or her next of kin does. And it's the issue of do we pull her off life support? That's different from a newborn baby in a different no, legal no, no, context. But we've, no, the legal context is the parents have the full right to do what's best for their child. I think, this I think you this is to... a conservative position too, by the way, in terms of parents How having the right to- How many times I gotta to... tell you I'm a liberal? Okay, but right. the, so, so there's... let me make a point. Okay. The, 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 the issue- I'm a liberal uh, with all well, conservative ahead, talking well, points. Because it's we awesome. have to distinguish between two things. There are situations where a person is injured to the point where they require extraordinary measures in in, the, in order to stay alive. So we're not talking about, you know, food, water, basic treatment. We're talking about things like being hooked up to an insane amount of machines, uh, things that are incredibly burdensome. There is a difference between a person in that situation who's saying without all of these unnatural means I would die, so pull the plug, and saying this person's alive but they're suffering so we're going to kill them. There's a difference between pulling the plug in a life support situation where that person requires extraordinary means to stay alive and a person who is alive and is sustained but you're deciding to go out of your way to kill them. Those are two different situations. Yeah, that's a good point. But he's. But also, I think the point you're making, too, is if the baby was in a situation where Yeah, Mont and Bailey. Let's 100%. say the baby's born with a hole in its heart, which happens. And it's bleeding too fast for them to, to try and surgically repair. My answer is we'll repair it. Let's say a baby's born without a brain. It's happened before. Yeah. Uh, I, I do not, I think the you issue need is, I'll tell you why, I, I, I take to the be able to stance, make your body one, not the survive. You, you cannot I don't believe exist the government has a, a right to dictate a person, give their body or blood to another person. What are we person. talking about? And there are questions that's, of that's, uh, that's privacy, a dead fetus. and there are questions that's of a dead government baby. overreach. However, when, a, when another person enters the equation, you have one person sharing two bodies, that's why I'm like, you know, so, so second and th third trimester abortions are where things get, get risky. Now, when it comes to no edge cases, here's my born. story about the brainless the baby. Is the legal permission to kill a baby. I say the answer is no. Every effort must be made to save the life of the baby. The, in the instance of Terry Schiavo, every effort was made to save her, but she was dwindling. They so so it's a question. What of, what is the effort to save the life of a baby born without a brain? Actually, none. So the the baby that was born without a brain just the 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 it was a, what the cerebellum I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the story. The involuntary functions all functioned completely fine. We're not doing fine. edge cases, by the way. And uh, general stimuli happened. So the baby was able to eat, was able to, you know, basically live and grow, but uh, not, you know, articulate thoughts or learn math or things like that. The, 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 the bigger issue is not uh, a singular case, right? The issue I have with... Uh, and in uh, syphilis. Yeah, but this is not people born without a brain, like totally. This is people born with a major portion of the brain, without the absence of a major portion of the brain, but they're still going to have enough um, motor functions and, and basic abilities to be able to survive. That's different than what Tim Poole was saying. He's saying there are they're many born circumstances without brains. where babies were born in a state that, the, that a doctor has said is un, it's not viable, and the babies actually lived. There are many people who uh, actually survived attempts at abortion. There are many people who were born, and the doctor didn't believe it was possible. There are many people who were born where the doctor said, you will die if you have this baby. In oh, fact, man. a good friend of they mine do was not bedridden, like... I think, the entirety of her pregnancy. <laughs> they do not like Matt. The doctor said, we have no choice. And she said, I will lie still on a bed for nine months to have this baby. And the doctor was like, you can't do it. And she had the baby and the, and the kids healthy and alive and living in a And she life. made that choice. Absolutely. So my, Not so everyone I, can stay in a bed for nine months straight. Agreed. That's amazing. So my issue is... If only this country did, this, did something for mothers, they could all be in that same position. So the reason I disagree with late-term abortion especially, I mean, partial birth abortion is out of the question, is that when a secondary uh, individual's rights are brought into question, you don't have an easy way to say one person's rights trumps, trump another. In which case, I think late-term abortions are wrong. I think the killing of a baby, the terminating of a pregnancy, as the CDC defines it, as the Democrats proposed it, would be wrong. And for some reason, Seamus over here, who's pro-life, who disagrees with me, uh, Lydia, who disagrees with my position, have, the, have, have a much more reasonable position to where I'm at than the left does. So for me, let me explain it. That women Social should have autonomy. Whole life. I believe there were, there that should women have been should efforts have autonomy to alleviate inequality among marginalized races growing up in Chicago and experiencing it. 
And I believed that freedom of speech was very, very important, and we must protect the civil rights of all people. And, you know, my family typically was in the position Clean of first room. trimester. It's begrudgingly Thank okay. You, we don't like sister. it. But we recognize the extent to which we're willing government uh, to allow to have a say in certain matters when it comes to a person's life. But when it comes to the issue of a viable baby, then killing it would be egregious and wrong. Now, that position doesn't exist among the modern left in terms of the political space. I can talk to a Democrat like my friend who will tell me that's their belief. And I'll say, but that's not what the Democrats are trying to pass. According to the CDC, abortion would end the life of the baby. And the Democrats passed a bill that had a blanket open. The life of the baby can be ended if the mother's health is in question. But if the mother's health is in question, it doesn't explain why you would end the life of the baby when you could just induce labor or a C perform a C-section. And that's what happens when that situation is That's not possible. an abortion. Wait, what? what? Let, me, let me start Go again. Go ahead. The CDC defines abortion as a, 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 a procedure intended to terminate a suspected or known ongoing intrauterine intra pregnancy. I'm pronouncing that wrong. And that does <laughs> not result in a live birth. The Democrats' bill would... Remove any restriction on abortion, that is, ending a pregnancy with no live birth after viability, if the pregnant uh, if the pregnant patient's life is in is in jeopardy. So where where if, where are you? I'm 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 a little bit. The reason I think there's some confusion here is I'm confused what your position is. What is the Tim Pool position on this? Because you said safe, legal, and rare. Well, I've, I've, I've absolutely defined it several times. Let me do it again for you. Okay. Within the first trimester. Do you when, think it's not safe, legal, and rare now? I don't know what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know, that's what you've been saying that it needs to be safe, legal, and rare. So what do you so what right, do you right, so, so, so what do you Colorado, consider Colorado. what do you consider to be safe, legal, and rare? Describe without bringing up anything in other states. Give me what you consider a abortion. safe abortion, Bruh. a legal abortion, and a and, and what rare means in the term of abortion. So safe, legal, and rare is a political uh, catchphrase from you know, that the you 90s use a lot. Yes, right, right, because it represents the position of we don't like abortion, we think it's wrong. Right. So, but it's not. It's not wrong. Yes, it is. Uh, it's not wrong. Traditional yeah, liberal. If, if if abortion saves a woman's life, then it's not wrong. It's a medical. But it's that's a, not, but it's, they, a, it's a triumph of medicine uh, on, to save a woman's life. I'm sorry, James. I, let, me, let me try and answer. So, uh, in the '90s, we said safe, legal, and rare because it represented a position we had. Abortion as contraception is wrong. What do you think? Do you think abortion as contraception is okay? Who abortion as contraception? How like, well, that's why happen? we need to have sex education because it's pr it's preferable to not do that. I don't disagree. Do you think abortion as contraception is wrong? I personally, I wouldn't do it because I mean, I have two kids, so right. I mean, I've planned, and you know, these were two planned children, um, and these are two kids that I wanted to have. But is it wrong? Is it wrong? What? Abortion as contraception. No, I don't think it's wrong. It's not per, in, a, in a perfect world. We would have sex education and this wouldn't and wouldn't happen. But we don't live in a perfect world. Well, so why? Why would a perfect world? I'm confused. Are you saying it's wrong or it's not wrong? Oh, well, it's not wrong. <laughs> so, so we don't need sex education. It's fine. No, sex education is preferable. I just said that. Right, right, right. But you're but it, it, irrespective of abortion as contraception, because you don't think it's wrong. I don't think it's wrong. Okay, but okay, it's okay. preferable that it doesn't happen. OK, OK, OK. I can. I, I understand. I understand. So uh, I think it's wrong. Um, but I don't think it should. Uh, uh, I just. What a surprise to I don't like the idea that the government intervenes. Guessing the fact that you can't ever get pregnant plays a role in this. So but you, but you still haven't answered my question about what what safe, legal, and rare means to you. To you, like what is what is what is rare for you mean in the in the sense of abortion? Not abortion as contraception. Okay. Which is ninety two percent of abortions, elective abortions. Okay, we have we have in terms of uh, what percentage is is, a, uh, is rape or incest. I it's think like, it's, it's like one percent. I think right, 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 right. It's it's, it's less than it's point, point eight four. I think. Yeah. So rare is people should not be going out having sex, getting pregnant, and then being like, eh, get an abortion. However, my my position, because it comes from a libertarian, then stance, give them contraceptives. The government shouldn't be involved. Means it's going to happen. I don't like it. I think it's wrong. But safe, legal, and rare. Like genuinely, do you think that women who have to make that choice because they don't want to have kids and all of a sudden they wind up pregnant for whatever reason, do you think that's an easy decision to make? Do you think they sit there and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, well, this is my form of contraception, so I'm just going to continuously have sex, I'm going to get pregnant, and then in this world, I'm just going to keep having abortions because that's just how this goes. It's incredibly, incredibly taxing upon someone to have to go through all of this. This is, it just should still be available to them, and you shouldn't be able to do a moral condemnation of them in the process because you're like, well, I mean, you did get knocked up. I it was my penis, but I mean, you're knocked up at the end of the day. Come on. It means legal, means the government doesn't intervene. However, I mean, by the, by, the, by, the, about, by, by the sense of it being legal, the government has intervened because they've made it legal. No, no the, the government doesn't make things It's expensive. Legal. It's, it's personal. It's or, devastating. Or, 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 things already are legal. It's vilified. Or they're, or they're made illegal. 
if the, the government if, doesn't make something legal for you. If 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 Roe v. Wade gets overturned, what happens in this country? Abortion so becomes up to the states who can make it illegal, right? But they're right. But states can already remove the restrictions in place. Okay, so you said they're making it legal. They can, they can, they can, they can, they can remove some restrictions. So, so to answer your question, as I've been trying to. Wait, you, you know, you know, we don't, we don't go by the the trimester thing anymore, right? What do you mean? We, Roe v. Wade isn't the law. Of the, it, Roe v. Wade is the law of the land when it comes to abortion, mm. but we don't go by first, second, and third trimester when it comes right, to right, abortion. Right, right, right. Those are those are just easy ways to understand what I really mean. No, 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 because no, it's not that's not accurate at all. It's not just an no, easy way right. to understand. You know what Casey v. Planned Parenthood is, right? Yes. What is it? It's the 1992 provision that set the, removed the restrictions on, on on trimester and raised the question of viability. I don't I don't know what you're asking. Okay, and it also paved the way for more. I don't know the point you're trying to make. Restrictions. Right. Okay. So we already allowed in this country, due to, thanks to Roe v. Wade and KCB Planned oh. Parenthood, we can uh, uh, a, uh, a state can decide to put restrictions on abortion, even in the first trimester now, uh -huh. since 1992, Casey. Right, 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 right. And after viability, which is different for every woman, it's up to a doctor to decide when through scanning and everything, they can then say... Oh, once it's viable, the state can ban abortion completely at that point. Except for in the case of no. health of the mother. Right. And which makes no sense. How does that make no sense? Why kill a baby? Pro choice, by the way. No, 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 no. You don't understand. Yeah. They can ban abortion except for when it needs to happen to protect the life and safety and health of the mother. I mean, we already, we already, see, we already see this. We already see this. In if this the baby is viable and the pregnancy needs to be ended, why kill the baby? We're talking, we're talking at like, could be like 20 weeks. You're right. We're, viability specifically. At 20 weeks and the baby's not viable. That's why I don't care for the trimester thing. My point is, if the baby is viable, life rights come into play. So for conservatives and pro-lifers, life rights are in play from the day of conception. Uh, well, you're, you're looking at this. Like, like you're arguing like, with a pro-choice person <laughs> because you're telling me you that, realize that right? <laughs> what, what, when when should when you do you think that. abortion should i'm pro-choice because i say i'm pro-choice i'm a liberal because like, i say when, I'm a liberal. when should you, there be ban on abortion like what viability. viability because at that point the baby can just be delivered that's not true all the time though. right right if, so that's why i said it should be all attempts to save also in the cases that tim pool is talking about it, it is most likely that the baby is not viable at that point there's something seriously wrong and it has to be terminated because it's going to pose a threat to the life of the mother that's the example that tim is using as like you know the wedge for all of this you, you you're, you're at risk for this this condition and we have to end the pregnancy i'm sorry every effort should be made to save the life of the baby that but the baby might die and i recognize that it's unfortunate and i think that should be allowed the abortion should happen uh, I'm sorry. The abortion, as legally defined, shouldn't a, a induced delivery via so, C-section so or your, labor. So what is your opinion about what's because we're, we're talking about this now. And, you know, I think obviously we have our opinions and we're agreeing on some things and disagreeing on others. Um, what is what is your opinion on what's going on right now, though? Like that's Colorado where, removed all restrictions. No, I'm talking about what's going to happen right now with the Supreme Court. Mm. Yeah, they're going to overturn Roe v. Wade. OK. Red states are going to enact trigger laws and they're going to outright ban abortion across the board. Yes. Right. I, I disagree with that. OK, good. I, I, I think especially when the conservatives argue uh, uh, rape and incest, it seems to be a conflicted argument where they say uh, in the instance of rape and incest, we'll allow that exception. And I'm like, I can understand that point from a libertarian perspective, but not from a moral position on when life begins, because. I mean, you, you Seamus, no exceptions. I, yeah, there's a couple things I want to jump into here. So you mentioned situations where a mother has to have an abortion because her life is at risk. And there are doctors I've spoken to. There are even notes and petitions signed by literal hundreds of doctors who say that is a that is an inaccurate description. That is not what happens. There is no such thing as a medically necessary abortion. There are procedures that might need to be performed on a woman who is pregnant, which can cause her to miscarry. But that is not the same as an abortion. Abortion is when you go in there with the direct intent to end the life of an unborn child. Just read if the there's scene, an just, operation, just, I just, just want to say, scene, if the there's scene. an operation that has to be performed in order to save the life of the mother, but it poses a risk to the unborn child and increases the probability that they will die, that there will be a miscarriage, that is not an abortion. That is an attempt at a medical procedure that has an unintended consequence. So, that is oh, the CDC's so, definition so, of abortion. So that's the semantics yeah. so, that have you all it, fucked up over that, this. I think that's important because... When I tweeted that thing about abortion at eight months, Hassan's followers said, you're an idiot. 
it, they would they, they would perform a C-section or induced labor. Mm. But the CDC doesn't define induced labor or C-section as that. It says not resulting in a live birth. I'm, what, what I'm confused about here, and we can talk about this. Cause we, I feel like we've already covered Tim, this, so I mean, sure. if you want to just we'll go over and over. But, 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 this but is what, so I'm, what I'm concerned about here, in terms of like um, talking with you about this, is you know, for the past couple of weeks, I've noticed you've been talking a lot about this issue, and it's been a big issue since Roe v. Wade. But your focus seems to have been on these sort of edge cases that bolster the anti-choice position like you're not here sitting here and talking about how horrible it is about all the women who will miscarry and go through all sorts of the legal issues in these red states you're not sitting here talking about um can they move oh you know my god it is for people not yeah, everyone yeah. Is, how expensive that you know, is just, you yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. classes a major move you pores yeah but you've also not heard me say apparently that when i tell conservatives if you want to live in these he areas just did the ben shapiro thing schools you Not for climate change, but for like having a forced what birth. Is, what, what did schools have to do with what we're talking about right now? Like we're talking so, about, so we're I'm talking about. To you we're what talking you about, misunderstand. No, but let, let me let me answer your, your okay, question. Go ahead. Okay. When you're like, why aren't you, why aren't you telling uh, women this and others? I say the same thing to conservatives. Like my, my position on personal responsibility is the same across the board, regardless. Personal of what responsibility. Issue is. No, it's not. It's not because you're, fil- you're you've been focusing on the past. Where does past personal few, responsibility years, start? However long it's been, you've been do dudes have to have their dicks cut off? These edge case scenarios where, like, oh, uh, you bring up Ralph Northam, the yeah. f- oh, yeah, he's not even relevant anymore. That law, this is three years ago. Now he's not even in power. Is Kathy Tran? What to me? Is Kathy Tran? Still? Maybe she is. I don't know. But that bill is not up for anything. It would be. It would be. No, so so they're, they're trying to pass these bills that I don't like, right? Well, they're not going to be able to. Is, so is it is it because maybe I spoke up against it and helped contributed to pushback from people who disagree with it? Is, is that true? Did you do that? Considering that I've been speaking about that issue for a long enough period of time and we live next to Loudoun County and people in Virginia are fans of the show and I see them, I think we did. I think the fact that I said these psychopaths are trying to pass a bill where the woman actually said at the point of birth you could kill the baby, I think that absolutely oh contributes gosh. to people being like, vote her out, get her out. Now, I don't know if she's still in office, but Northam, for sure. The Ralph Northam thing, absolutely. Matt Walsh came down here 20 minutes away. Sure, okay. I so mean, that's why I talk I mean, about Tim it. Pool's got power. Okay. Because, because so why, aren't using, why aren't you using the same power to fight what we're talking about right now? Fight what? What's going to happen to a pro, uh, woman's I right? I will not stand next to a man who told me to my face he is okay with killing a baby at nine months. Mm. If I had to make the choice between banning abortion across the board or standing next to people who would advocate for nine-month abortion, I will stand next to the people who are saying ban it across the board, period. Okay. You need to understand how psychotic on, the left the record. in Colorado sounds when they say terminate the life of the baby at viability to, to the overwhelming majority of this country that think that's wrong. But no 70% one is, of this country is pro-choice and believes there should be restrictions. And there are right now. You should be advocating and right Colorado now. Colorado is removing them. You should be advocating them. right now for no. exactly what we have. For, so you, you disagree with Roe v. Wade. I don't disagree with it. <laughs> but you do. Because I don't disagree. Because disagree with how it. does how My does friends. Colorado well, how say. is Colorado allowed to have those restrictions under Roe v. Wade? No, I'll, I'll agree with you to a. I certain. mean, you have to. No, you have to. Right, if down. Colorado I'll agree with you, you just got super angry at me. Now I'm doing the same too, and I got to slow down. If you, I made one point. You made. I'm trying to address one point. Okay, go. If I say one thing. You said. I'm. You said I would, exactly I would, what I. Just, I would actually oh, say. I would probably lean at this point more towards uh, rights falling to the individual states. So you okay? So you're happy Roe v. Wade is is I going say, down? I wouldn't say happy. That's, that's a bit of an overstatement. <laughs> I mean, I think, but I, but I mean, you are now on he the record. He's so you slimy. Prefer Roe he v. is Wade such a weasel. I think that's. Uh, I think the issue is more so. I mean, I mean, it's a pretty simple. I think this is a easy. You want after to answer what it or you want to keep talking? I want you to answer it definitively. Right. So uh, I'm a moderate. Right? <laughs> I have. I thought you were a liberal. <laughs> Moderates can be liberal. Mm, okay, yeah. So, mm. so social liberal is a center-left position on the political Moderate. compass. That's typically where I've been my whole life. Uh, there are deep moral and ethical questions I don't have the answers to. I'm a milk toast. At this fencer. point, considering the disruption mm-hmm. in the United States and the extreme hyperpolarization, I would I would fall more towards on states' rights, and that's because okay. that's uh, not that's not a Roe liberal position at all. I mean, states' sure. rights is, is, is firmly in right-wing libertarianism. It's not right-wing libertarian. It's actually just general libertarian. 
So mm. left libertarians also agree with, with decentralization of authority and power. Mm, left libertarians do not agree with the, the decentralization of authority and power. Not, not in that same way. But you think ahead, anarchists go want ahead. a strong federal government? Anarchists and libertarians are not the same left thing. Left libertarians. Anyway. And, 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 and comms. You think they want a strong <laughs> federal government? No, anarch anarchists and libertarians are not the same thing. Do you know... Do you know what the political compass is? Yes, I do. Do you know what anarchy means? Yes, I do. What does anarchy mean? Anarchy means... Comp Clean no, up your no, room. Uh, the, the absence of government. No government. Anarchy means without authority. Yeah. So you, if you're an authoritarian... You're both you wrong, unfortunately. To That's the same thing what I just said. No authority. If so, is authority. so you can Tim be, Bob, you can be a Thank left you. libertarian or a right libertarian. Uh, liber civil liberties. We're talking about civil liberties? Yes. So if you're a left libertarian, you typically agree with like... But, but like left, good, left libertarians agree in civil liberties across the board. They don't want like one state saying uh, civil liberties, these civil liberties are okay, but another state is saying those, those civil liberties are not okay. If the state enforces something, that's authoritarian. Not necessarily. I'm not saying it's authoritarianism. I'm saying it's an authoritarian position. Oh, it comes from so, a position of power and authority. Right, sure, right, right. Yeah. So... So just quickly, anarchists believe uh, fundamentally that any hierarchy has to justify itself, that the burden of proof Clean upon up anyone room. who's going to enforce a hierarchy upon someone else, that burden of proof lies within the hierarchy itself. So if someone is going to impose a hierarchy upon someone else, the burden of proof to justify that hierarchy lies upon that other uh, person who's enforcing it. Roe v. Wade so is country so is being ripped apart. No, no, no. And you, you just said, you you just, you just said before that you'd prefer it not to happen because you hated what was happening Let in Colorado. And no, that's Col not what I said. That is what you said. No, it Can isn't. We, I wish we could rewind this. People would be able to that's, rewind this. That's listen, what you said. Calm down. Colorado, that's what you said. Colorado is the extreme left position. If I were to say the states can make their own decision, Colorado is allowed to keep doing what they're doing. That's not restricting it. If I were to say the federal government should, should, should step in, it would stop Colorado from doing it. My position on Roe v. Wade, for the most part, is that I agree with it. My position on today's Clean politics across the board is that the country is being gutted and ripped apart, and perhaps preventing Thank conflict you, means pulling back on what states can do, weakening the federal government. Okay. I mean— That's not a position on abortion. It's a position on, on authority versus liberty. It means bad things will happen I don't like. But it also means I'm worried that the extreme polarization of Colorado or Virginia versus Oklahoma are deeply troubling— and maybe pulling back federal authority can help alleviate some of the tension. I'm not saying it's a, def it's, it's a guaranteed answer, and I don't know it's right. But my position on authority versus liberty is irrespective of abortion. My position on authority and liberty means bad things happen I don't like, but I'm trying to stop people from killing each other. If you have a, a total ban on abortion, the left goes nuts. If you have unrestricted abortion, the right goes nuts. I'm actually so what we have right now. It seems Stephen, to be the, Stephen, you know, you talk about compromise, right? right. right? We, I've heard you talk about compromise. What we have right now is is would be your it's, perfect scenario, right? It's not because in many states they're removing all restrictions, and the Democrats at the federal level just tried to allow the termination of a baby at nine months. If they add a provision oh to it that says all efforts must be made to save the life of a baby and took out the term abortion and said a pregnancy... It was a politician that, that, who that, that made a comment who he walked back, it. by the way. They just tried to pass it. And it didn't pass. Do you know where I live? Sure. West Virginia. I mean, I'm here right now. Do you know who my senator is? Uh, it's Joe Manchin. And who stopped the bill from passing? There you go. And why do you think I'm talking about it? Because you're a big fan of Joe Manchin. Because Joe Manchin did something I like. I don't <laughs> like surprise. Joe Manchin for the most part. But what I don't do you like about him? I think he's an establishment chill. I think he just says what he thinks is gonna he's gonna play the the best, and I don't think I don't think he's hmm. genuinely interested in the in worst person. Problems. Just made a point. What did you think about him killing Build Back Better? Define. You mean the the infrastructure plan? No, the bill that the the bill that had a swath of things. The main thing for me, the main thing that would have really been amazing, is the child care, the um, the uh, return of the child tax credits, the uh, extension of um, of um, uh, what was it? The uh, 3K. Uh, Federally, I mean, those are those are huge, amazing things. If you're a you know, if you're a fan of, um, you know, uh, the doing the best for children in this country, those things were fantastic. So, in 2008, into 2012, into 2016, I've always been in favor of social programs, and I've always advocated for such. Yeah. My my concern with them is that what happens with a lot of these social programs is, let's say you get a wound on your arm, is my my analogy. Uh, people are homeless. Kids don't have food. Your society has a wound, so we put a bandage on it. That's a government program. We're trying to mend that damage. The problem with the government is that 12 months later, instead of taking the bandage off and assessing the issue, sunsetting or otherwise, they reapply another bandage on top. Instead of using this weird... This is gibberish. Just, just so we're clear, this is absolute, complete gibberish. Can you give me an actual example? They never, they never reassess or end programs. 
<clears throat> so when programs... Like, what program do you think should be ended? I, I'm not saying they should. I, I don't know. But that's what you just said. So what I'm saying is that... You said they should reassess well, programs and end them. That's what you just said. I know. You're smiling, but you're not <laughs> understanding what I'm saying. Okay? Okay. Physical corporations. <laughs> private corporations. <laughs> Physical can fail, corporations. Right? Of course. <laughs> Social programs can't. When have we... <laughs> or or, or uh, has there been a major reassessment? What about of metaphysical that corporations? Have not so I'll I'll give you an example. You can look at the disaster that was Pruitt Igo, right? So I did a documentary on the on the public housing and how instead of reassessing and solving the problem, it dissolved into racist violence and created some of the most worst racial tensions in this country in in St. Louis. My issue with government programs is that they're good, but we need to make sure we have strong leadership. And we don't just say, sign the check, sign the check, sign the check, sign the check. My issue right now. So you now, want oversight. What did you think of the child tax credit? Uh, explain. Uh, <laughs> sure. Children, uh, parents of children under the age of, what is I think that? it was six, would get $300 a month tax credit. And then um, uh, over six. Ex explain. Two, I, believe, I don't remember when the cutoff was. I know specifically six and two year olds because that's the age of my children. Um, and so every month I was able to receive along with everybody else who has a child in that age range, um, 300 for the under six, yep. 200, uh, 250 hey, up, Good to see for the, uh, the six year old. And for me personally, like uh, people might be shocked to know this if they know me as a blue check on Twitter. But um, just having, you know, a blue check on Twitter doesn't mean you're all that rich or wealthy. Good I, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, two so, points, though. Two points. Go, oh, well, well, let me explain to I you want, the ch child tax credit. I'm not done. Okay. So basically, they get, uh, you, you get that child tax credit. For me, for my family, it's a huge help. We were able for a number of child care things. Oh. Um, schooling as well. Um, go ahead. Two points. One, uh, child tax credits are incredible and really good things. We, mm. If there's anything we want to do in this country is provide tax breaks okay. to parents and do what we can to encourage people to have families. Second point is my criticism of Build Back Better, for the most part, was the economy is imploding. So my, my perspective on a lot of these things has less to do with what a perfect society can and should do and, and more so like, have you looked at the M1 money stock recently? No. Let me pull Have that up. You looked at the amount of discretionary well, thing, spending you, on the you military. You said before what, what are that, you um, saying? You, know, you had you you believe you had some power based on where you are. This is a good idea. Politics. Well, I'm talking about uh, as the a economy. resident of West Virginia. My advocacy plays it a helps role the economy. In people in West Virginia. While, while you're on, if families right have now, money to spend. You tell Joe Manchin that. Um, the child tax credit was a huge help to families across this country. Joe Manchin, probably, the child tax credit was a huge help I'm to really families across this that. country. I'm really happy you're doing that. So, and you should advocate for it more often on your show. It uh, really, it we, really, we, is. we literally have good. We I'll have I, to I pull mean, it up. But you realize it's like a, that's a that, that's also a deeply far right position. I'm not saying it's it's an only a far position. If you look at uh, I think Romania, Wait, what? they do huge tax credits when you have kids. Yeah, like it is like conservatives are like more babies, more babies, government, government tax credits. Take a look at the M1 money stock. It's weird, though, that that's the case in Romania, because here in this country, every Republican voted against it. But it's not. But it's not just voting. They're not against far that. right Take enough. Take a look at the M1 money. That's stock. That's the problem. Do you want to? Do you know what this is? What this is? What it represents? Honestly, I'm not familiar with this. Does this look shocking? This spike. Sure. Does it look shocking compared to going back to 1960 in terms of our money supply? Sure. Oh no. Something weird is going on. Oh. And if no. you look beyond the major spike, this is the uh, M1 money supply. It's a, it's a reference to money in circulation. In uh, 2020, because of the pandemic, the rules were changed that allowed savings accounts to enter general money supply. It used to be that there were limitations on how much you could pull out of savings. This caused a massive spike in the money supply from $4 trillion up to $16 trillion, uh, eligible in the money supply. But we can ignore that because it's a rule change, although I think it's substantial. You take a look at from May of 2020 until uh, today, and you can see that the economy has expanded, or I should say that the money supply has expanded by over $4 trillion. One of the reasons, if not the biggest reason why we're seeing such rapid inflation, which is gutting families, is because of the mass spending. I'd love to see a tax credit for families um, based on kids. I'd love to see people get huge benefits when they have kids. And I think because it's one of the, of the best ways to actually deduct tax credits. Sure. And also, I just want to also add again work that of the Federal um, Reserve. Republicans you... vote against those things all the time. They right, are right, the ones right. who are against that. I just want to make, no, no, I want to make that clear. Like we should right. really. Yeah, I don't like Republicans. Good. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, so when you look at the money supply and you realize that we are headed towards a credit cardiac arrest, stealing mm -hmm. that line from uh, Hugo Ferrant and Juice Rap News, <laughs> we can't, we can't sustain this. We, we are in, we are in dire straits right here. 
uh, diesel fuel is, is facing shortages. Do you know what happens if diesel shortages hit? Oh, sure. It's, it's harder for trucks to deliver. You know, no, what, no, no, no. It means there's, they, they can't grow food. Okay. What are you going to eat? Okay. Only after every, every trucker has run out of gas, after every factory has stopped producing and every farm stopped tilling, so what do you think will we socialists should, what, 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 realize what, you can't eat money? What, what do you think we should do about it? Socialists are in power in the U.S. I think we got to curtail the spending the and raise interest rates. Okay. One you of the things you, they did was you, raise you don't, you don't think we should raise This is neoliberalism. Enough. What are you talking about? The wealthy. Who's the wealthy? I mean, who's the wealthy? No, no, no. Like, like <laughs> who's the wealthy? Say, the I'll socialists. Say, uh, you know, for me, wealthy is probably much lower than most based on my own. How much do wealthy um, people pay in taxes? But um, <laughs> not enough. What? Not enough. Well, tell not me enough. how much you want to tax Not them. enough. What's the number? Not enough. Probably what we've taxed them back in, uh, you know, in the FDR years. What is that? Probably like something like 90 something percent. But they didn't 90%. pay that in the FDR years. They skirted that. Well, That's hold on, part hold on, hold of why on. they adjusted the tax code. Right. So so 90 percent of what? Of their, their 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 tax. I mean, of their uh, income. How do rich people make money? What do you mean? How do rich people make how money? How do rich people make money? <laughs> There's all sorts of different ways they make money. Some okay. of them invest. Do you know what Jeff them... Bezos' income is? <laughs> oh, you're talking about because they have so much in stocks. No. Okay, then what are you talking about? What You said their income. Right. What's Jeff Bezos' income? Oh, I don't know if he's cashed any stocks this year. I don't know what his regular income is. I don't know. Eighty-three. His his uh, his his income, uh, his salaried income is eighty-three thousand. Right. His actual okay. income doesn't is about surprise a, me. They do that. Yeah, sure. They make a million bucks. Sure. He makes a million dollars. Sure. That's how much he makes. Sure. You want to tax a guy who makes a million dollars? Uh, yeah, for is, sure. Is that going to pay down four trillion dollars in, 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 in? Well, are yeah. you saying are you I, saying I, I that, tax uh, their net like assets, never going not... to cash in any of their stock? They don't. He just lives off a million dollars a year. They do. I actually think we should tax the rich. By the way, I just think you don't know anything about it. What do you mean? I don't know. I, I simply <laughs> want to tax them more. It's, it's simple. But where? What do you mean where? Like tax them on what? Oh, uh, capital gains. How much? Mm, I just told you. What? Same. Ninety percent of capital gains. Yeah. What will that do? What will I do? What will bring that do? Why? <laughs> Generate a lot of money. Why? why will it bring a lot of money? <laughs> what, what does that mean? Why? Why would that bring in a lot of money? What is you. happening? How would taxing someone's capital gains bring in money? Give me the give me the give me the mechanics. <laughs> if someone sells, for example, Elon Musk sells a billion dollars in Tesla stock, and we take nine hundred million of it, hmm. hmm. So if he doesn't he sell the stock. He still has a hundred million. So if he doesn't dollars. if he doesn't sell the stock, what happens? Well, sure, then that happens, yeah. Sure. So then you're not taxing anything. Well, they do need to. They do set. They do. I mean, and based on that them, one right? example, we yeah, don't have to tax more them taxes than anyone else in history. I, I think we right. should we should tax the rich right. in a, a variety of ways. Oh, yes. did YouTube just crash? There on you us? go. We just lost every super chat. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know what I think it is. YouTube just deleted all of the super chats. You got to be kidding me. Really? Why did they do that? Why are they right I'm here? Swear. I don't think they. I don't think it can handle. I, this I level see of them super all. Chat. Seriously. Wow, man. Oh, my gosh. This I guy apologize is just to wrong. everybody because we pushed it longer than we normally do because I think it's worth a conversation to have. I, but still, wait, see, what happened? I still see Super Chats in we're not my cut replay up. of it. <laughs> I, only I, I still see them, too. Ooh. I can only see, like, Shame 10 of them. them though. Yeah. That's well, we'll get to those. So here's the what issue. What a weird thing to lie about. Um, what, what is that law <laughs> about taxes going too high and people not <laughs> losing tax revenue? Yeah, so this is, this is known as... Sorry, all of you who have been donating hundreds of dollars to the Tim Pool Show. It seems like YouTube shut down our super chats. It's not being replicated in anyone else who's watching this right now, including you at home who paid for it. But uh, we're not going to be able to get to those. But uh, next time, next time. Good job. Good good way to spend your money. Is the laugh or yeah, tax the super chats. That's what we're going to do. Tax all those super chats. 90% of Tim Pool super chats. Basically, there are some left-wing people who will say the laugh or curve doesn't exist, but it's an uneducated take because every left-wing economist agrees it exists. The only disagreement between the left and the right is where that parabola peaks and how high of a tax rate you can get away with, how that changes based on industry. But regardless of what tax rates have been, generally speaking, federal revenues have never exceeded 20% of GDP. So there's no real reason to believe we could ever have anything greater than that in federal revenue for a sustained period of time, regardless of what the tax rate is. I'm going to try and see if I can find an alternative way to pull up the super chats. Sorry. So, um, or well, usually read the super chats on the show. We normally we do yeah. Yeah, and we do at nine 30, but I was like, this is a good conversation. And well, uh, let's, what we should really talk about. It's kind of uh, incredible. Well, we haven't well, talked about it yet. And I don't think it should be cut into the second part of the show. Um, I can't pull it. I think really think we should talk about what was the big story of the weekend was this, this mass shooting. Let me let me answer the tax thing real quick, uh, so we don't get away from it. So, uh, what happens with, with with taxes is when you raise the tax rate, you reduce trade volume. Reducing trade volume actually reduces the amount of money you make. I actually agree with taxing the rich. <clears throat> I think we need to increase the tax brackets. I think they've not been increased in a long time, and it's not so much a percentage base. It's that 
if you're making 250, like right now, I think the top bracket is well, like 250 plus. So like somebody who makes 13 million a year in a salary is paying the same percentage as someone makes 250. That's crazy. I certainly think we can raise the brackets. So we space things out and we end up taxing the rich more. The uh, the majority of millionaires, I think, run what are called. Um, I feel like uh, Matt Binder tax, uh, fumbled the tax stuff a bit. I mean, there was a lot of things that you could have slammed Tim Pool on in that segment. Uh, but I think Tim Pool is kind of doing the, you know, basically embarrassing yourself in the process of trying to describe it like you're an authority on the subject. Like, isn't he referring to the Laffer curve right now? A handful of billionaires, like in the couple hundred. But billionaires is based on uh, net worth, which is very often like imaginary numbers. So if you raise capital gains, you reduce trade volume in the market. Reducing trade volume reduces your revenues. It's the Laffer curve he's referring yeah. to. So just raising rates at 90% yeah. doesn't change anything. It just disrupts that was, the system. Wasn't that debunked a long hiccups. time ago? Although I, I, I said I agree with, with taxing the rich. I think the issue is, for me, when I, when, I, when I made this point about abortion, and then all of these people associated with the left were like, that's just, they would just do a C-section. They would just do induced labor. They don't know what the legal definition is. They don't know the CDC definition, and they don't know what the Democrats tried you to tried do. You tried to get a Instead dunk of actually engaging, on a honestly, really, legitimately really saying that's an interesting point. point the law is making there. On something that is tragic. Ignore it, say I'm stupid, or just don't even engage with the issue. I don't know who you're specifically talking about, but um, like I, think we, I, think, I think we, well, I'm sitting here, and I think we engage with it quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we should, we should, um, unless let's you want to continue talking about, I mean, I think we should. Yeah, let's talk about yeah. the, 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 the shooter, man. Yeah. So he was oh, uh, a self-described authoritarian leftist. Oh who God. believed in the Great Replacement. Oh Place him God. on the political map wherever you think that makes sense. He claimed he was a populist as oh well. Oh, my God. He uh, also claimed a number of other things. Like what? I can tell you right now. I'm pulling yep. it up. Um, hold on. Let me grab my... Uh, While you're pulling it up, can you tell me the name of the mass shooter from Chicago? The ma What mass shooter from Chicago? The one who killed... Uh, was it? Uh, sh not killed. Uh, from wait, the same weekend? Wait, Chicago? Or are you talking about the one in How Milwaukee? How is that a gotcha, Chicago. Tim? That's so weird. 17 people who got Name. shot. The no, there wasn't 17 one. people in Chicago who yeah, got shot. Yeah, there were. Name no, them. That was, that was Milwaukee. You're, you're wrong. Can you look it up? Yeah, I can. I actually Go pulled ahead. it up before the show. Sure. It's because he's Here's black, a police report it? from May 14th, Saturday. 17 people were shot. Why didn't you know the name of this shooter? Wait, would, in, uh, I can't see it. I can't see it. Press release Milwaukee, Friday, May 13th, Oh, oh Milwaukee. That's oh, what sorry. I said. That's You're what right. I said. <laughs> no, no. I was wrong. I thought it was Chicago. You're right. No, it was Milwaukee. It's Milwaukee. <laughs> and I, you I, are absolutely right. right. I hate that one. Right. Sorry, man. I saw that video you posted earlier today. Yeah. You said it wasn't covered. You know, the mainstream media didn't cover it, right? The Chicago one I was thinking of was, was I think, three people who got shot. Sorry. So, maybe, I think That's maybe my bad. Four, I, okay. I three, that three dead, yeah, 17 Chicago injured. Yeah, Chicago was four people who got in, shot. In Chicago. No, that's okay. But you said, like, you said that the mainstream media didn't cover those stories, right? No, no, that's not what I said. What'd you he say? was I Asian. I said, what's the name of the shooter in, from Milwaukee? Mm. I'm on your video earlier today. Why, why isn't it a national conversation? No, that's not what you said. Yeah, well, I mean, Can you pull up the video? Not really. <laughs> you can't pull up your own video? So if I'm, if you want me to go through YouTube and spend a minute to find the source and find the exact we were, minute we were, in the 20-minute segment where I said what we you're trying you to could, you could pull up the trend. You could pull up the subtitles and go right to it. I don't it, know how to do that. You know what I mean? Okay. We, we, we spent time I'm looking up data. This is your job. You said that the mainstream media didn't cover it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll apologize and I'll clarify what I meant. Okay. It's not a national conversation. Okay. But you said that about every, you said that same exact thing about every one of the shootings you went through. And every single yeah. one I did a simple Google search of. And not only did I find local media reports, I found it on CNN, NBC uh, News, I'm, I'm not, not the local affiliate. That. Okay. Good. I'm right. happy. Because uh, I pulled up those stories in my video. So just, just, just to clarify, if I was imprecise, I apologize. What I mean to convey is, but why, I, why are we having a national I, story I want to be clear, though, about why that matters. Because here, we're doing independent media, right? And the point is that we criticize mainstream media all the time. And I mean, me, I, I do the same thing. I pull up mainstream media stories, and I criticize how things are covered all the time. For example, um, I'm sure on this show, you've covered uh, the, the, the string of uh, you know, thefts, smash and grabs that are happening in, for example, I don't know, San Francisco or something like that, at like Rite Aids. You'd probably say that's the reason why Rite Aids are closing. Um, but you know, we never cover at the same fact. Wal Walgreens said they were closing because of that. Right. Some places, yeah. I'm sure, some places. We are. covered that one time when it announced that they were doing it. Right. Right. But I'm, maybe I'll, maybe referenced it a couple. Sure. More maybe. And also mainstream media. This is not a Tim Pool issue. This is an entire media issue. The mainstream media has covered these stories ad nauseum over and over again. And if you look up the stats when it comes to uh, the, 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 I'm sorry, man. I don't mean to interrupt you, but 
if we want to get at the core of my argument, it's not that the media is not talking about it because I use mainstream news sources in my coverage of no, it. No, no, no. What I'm bringing up is why it's important that I expect better from you in terms of doing that. No, you made a mistake. You're even admitting you made a mistake. For the Milwaukee thing. Right, right. No, I know, no. and I was funny because I was so sure of myself and I was so wrong. Right, right. <laughs> it happens. It happens. It happens. Right. It happens to everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, but um, I'm bringing up what you said earlier in your video today. Were you okay, everyone? You got to go support Matt Binder. He's absolutely fucking amazing. I, I'm really, really sorry. It's seven o'clock. I have to go pick up my dog from daycare before they close down. So I'm gonna keep watching this. Uh, obviously, like in the car on uh, my headphones. Uh, you all know where the link is to find it. I'll put it in the chats. Here you are. Here's the link. Go support Matt Binder. Go to his uh, site. Uh, go to his YouTube. Go follow him. All that kind of stuff. I'm really, really sorry. Um, but yeah, I have to go pick up my dog because I don't want him to get stuck there. And Matt Binder is absolute fire. I think he did incredible. There was maybe like one or two little slip ups. Uh, but otherwise, like overall, this was uh, a really good performance uh, by Matt. Uh, and uh, yeah, you're all, all fantastic and amazing. All right. Do you enjoy the surfs but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form, available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free, just like the podcast. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, we are prepared to embark on a mighty jihad in your name. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are but your humble jesters, attempting in vain to get you to laugh. To our valiant knights of the round table, Benji Arnie, Tech Tink, Scary Urculin, Tony, DM Rivera, Resident Scarecrow, Sir Nickus, Mayred, Cheryl Alvarez, Ruby Kelly, Brandon, Words Greenwood, It doesn't matter what I believe, it only matters what I can prove, Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Marianne McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Coulter Smith, Jenna Tao, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, The Tim Caucus, Multimondi, Trevbot, EXE, Brian Ephraim, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Catherine, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Agent NDN, Violent Orchard, Political Puppy, La Media Panza, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our mugs and salute our brave heroes off to another glorious conquest.